Ok, we good? Ok, all praise to the Most High. Shalom, Israel. Most High, God bless you all. All praise to the Lord. It is Sabbath to you all, brothers and sisters online. Ok, um, so today I'm going to go over at last. Um, it's quite personal actually. Um, the things that are happening now in our nation. Um, black men killing black men. Broad daylight. No fear whatsoever. No shame whatsoever. You understand? And the, the, the communities, they are terrorized. Mothers, fathers, nobody wants to say anything because why? They are going to shut you down. They're going to kill you. Listen, not on this day. You understand? The most that God is with us. So today's topic is called Gangsters, Incarvis, and Terrorism in the Community. Okay? So give me that book of James 2 verse 8. James 2 and 8. Read that for me. The book of James chapter 2 verse 8. Read. If ye fulfill the royal law, if you fulfill the royal law, he's talking to the 12 tribes of Israel. Give me that in James 1 and 1. Let's see who he's talking to. Okay. Read that. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Read. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. To the what? To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. So the apostle James is writing to the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Uh, put up the, the 12 tribes chart, put it on the screen so that people can see it. So we can see the 12 tribes that the Apostle James is writing to. Who are they today? Okay, give me Jeremiah 14 verse 2. Because the Jews is black people. The Jews, the so-called blacks, Bantus, Hispanics, and Native American Indians will make up the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, read that for me. Jeremiah 14 verse 2. The book of Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Read. Jews are mourning. He says the Jews are mourning. So the subject matter is the Jews. Go ahead. And the gates there of language. And the gates there of language. There is no leaders in the nation of Israel. That's why gangsters are running rampant in our nation right now. They are doing all manner of evil. And guess what? They have no fear. They have no fear because why? They are doing it, and the community is afraid to stand up. Why? Because the community is terrorized by these young black men and older black men waving guns in our faces. Read. They are black. They are what? They are black. They are what? They are black. They are black. Come on. And to the crowd. So the Jews are black. So the subject matter here is the Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel. The Jews is black people. Okay. The so called blacks, Bantus, Hispanics, Native American Indians scattered all over the world through slavery, colonization, and forced migration. Okay. So go back to where he was at. James 1 and 1. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Read. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. The 12 tribes is what you see on the screen. Is it on the screen that people can see it? Show the people. To the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. The 12 tribes is what you see on your screen, brothers and sisters. These are the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 sons of Jacob. What you see on the left is the name that God gave us. What you see on the right is the byword, is the names that our enemies gave us when they conquered, colonized us, and changed our names. These are the names that you see on the right. These are the names that you know today. Bantus, Negroes, the tribe of Judah, West Indian blacks, our people in Jamaica and so forth, Tobacco, okay, the tribe of Benjamin, the Haitians of today so-called, the tribe of Levi, our people in Puerto Rico, the tribe of Ephraim, so on and so forth. These are the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, go to James now, 2 verse 8. James chapter 2 verse 8. The book of James chapter 2 verse 8. Read. If ye fulfill the royal law. The ye is the 12 tribes which are scattered that the apostle James is talking about in verse 1, chapter 1 verse 1. These are the people you see on the screen. These are the 12 tribes that the apostle James is talking about and he's writing to. Go ahead. If ye fulfill the royal law. If the 12 tribes of Israel fulfill the royal law. Go ahead. According to scripture. According to what? According to the scripture. According to the scriptures. Come on. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Come on. Ye do well. Because the 12 tribes of Israel, we are not doing that right now. Loving our neighbor as ourselves. That's why you see black men killing each other on the steep corners of Calfontaine. Every single day, you see children terrorized because black men waving guns why because they are full of the fury of the law they are full of god's judgment because they are no longer applying the royal law because they've forgotten who they are give me that in isaiah 1 and 3 
They don't remember who they are. They don't remember that they are the sons of God. They don't remember. That's why they are doing all men of evil that they are doing in our communities right now. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. Read. The ox knoweth his own. The ox is a cow. He says, the ox, the cow knows his own. The ox, the cow knows who owns him. Go ahead. And the ass, his master's crib. The ass is a donkey. He says, the donkey knows where he come from. He knows where his house is at. Read. But Israel. But the 12 tribes of Israel, the people you see on the screen. Read. Does not know. They don't know who their owner is. They don't know, meaning they don't know who their God is. They don't know who they, where they come from. They don't know where their homeland is. So therefore, you don't know your owner. You're not going to know where you come from. You're not going to know who you are. Because your owner gives you your name, your identity, your nationality, your language, your culture. Right now, the 12 tribes of Israel, black men, black women, Hispanic men, and Hispanic women, they don't know who they are. That's why they do all men of evil to each other. Read again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. Read. The ox knoweth his own. The ox knows his own. Come on. And the ass, his master's crib. The donkey knows where he comes from. Read. But Israel does not know. But the children of Israel, they don't know who they are. Come on. My people does not consider. They don't even consider that they are the sons and daughters of Jacob. They don't know that. They don't even consider it. It doesn't even come to mind. Why? Because they are full of the fury of the Lord. The rebuke of the Most High God of Israel of heaven and earth. That's why they do what they do to each other. Okay? So go back to James chapter 2 verse 8. James 2 verse 8. I want you to understand black men and black women. We are at war. Not only are we at war with the other nations, but we are, we are at war with our own people. You understand? Terrorism is taking place in our own nation. It's not just by the other nations. We understand that. But the terrorism that we see today, every day that we live with, it's coming from our people that look like us. Read. The book of James chapter 2 verse 8. Read. If ye fulfill the royal law. This is a commandment. If you fulfill the royal law, come on. According to the script. According to the laws of God. Read. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. This is a commandment. Come on. Ye do well. You do well. When you love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. That's what the Lord is saying. The 12 tribes of Israel, we have not been doing this thing. That's why there's so much evil. That is taking place in our community. Guess what? And guess what? The Lord is looking, is looking for black men to stand up. To put their boots on and go to the street corners and teach the people the laws of God. That's what the Lord is looking for, man. The Lord is looking for soldiers. He's not looking for mama's boys. The Lord is looking for soldiers. That's why the most said, give me that in Psalms 94. Psalms 94 verse 16. The most said, God is looking for soldiers. He's not looking for mama's boys. He's not looking for mama's comfort boys. He's not looking for that. He's looking for men that are willing to stand up for the good of this Bible to defend evil that is taking place. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Read. Who will rise up for me against the evil doers? The most that God is speaking to the men. He says, Who will, which one of you men is going to stand up for him against the evil doers? Who are the evil doers? The gangsters, in Gabi, and what? Terrorists, them that are terrorizing the community, which is the aforementioned gangsters and in Gabi in our communities. You understand? They are terrorizing our communities, man. We are not going to allow that thing to go on. The community right now is afraid, is terrorizing. They are afraid to speak up. We are not going to be afraid to speak up about this thing. Read again. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Read. Who will rise up for me against the evil doers? Against the evil doers. Read. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Against the workers of iniquity. That's what the Lord is asking. Which one of you black men is going to stand up for the evil that other black men are doing in our communities? These are niggas, man. That's what they are doing. They are terrorizing our communities. And we are not going to be quiet about this thing. Because we've got sons, we've got daughters, we've got our grandfathers and grandmothers walking the streets. Now they are afraid to do that. Why? Because Binkabis can just come out and kill you and for nothing. And they don't have no remorse, they have no shame whatsoever. That's why the communities don't want to say nothing because they are afraid. The most said God did not give us the spirit of fear. Give me that in one first Timothy chapter one verse eight. First Timothy. Is it second Timothy what I want? Yep. Second Timothy. Mm. Yep, second Timothy one verse seven. Read that for me. The second book of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. Read. For God had not given us the spirit of fear. The most high God did not give us the spirit of fear. So we are not going to be afraid. Understand that. Read. 
But of power. But of what? But of power. The power that the Lord gave us is this Bible. That's the power He gave us. He gave us the power to understand what this Bible is saying and for us to go out there and teach it, to apply it and then go out and teach. Read again. The second book of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. Read. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Read. But of power. Come on. And of love. Read. And of a sound mind. And of a sound mind. Come on. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. We must not be ashamed of what's written in this Bible. We're going to teach it as it is written. No fear, no favor. Come on. Nor of me, his prisoner. Read. But be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. You see that we must be partakers of the afflictions according to the power of God. We must understand that this is what we signed up for. We must go out and teach our people God's laws. Because evil is rampant in the community. Why? Because the prophets are not there. That's why the most High God wants black men to stand up and go to the street corners and hit the streets to wake up the 12 tribes of Israel. Read again. The first, the second book of Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. Read. For God had not given us the spirit of fear. God, the most High God did not give us the men the spirit of fear. Read. But of power. But of power, which is this Bible. Come on. And of love. And of what? And of love. Of the commandments. The power and love is the commandments of the Most High God. Because the Most High God backs us up. We keep the commandments, He backs us up. Read. And of a sound mind. And of a sound mind. Because you keep God's laws, you have sense. The Lord opens your eyes to see the evil that is taking place in our nation, and He gives you the solution on how to address them. Read. Be not, be not thou therefore ashamed. Of the testimony of our Lord. Read. No, of me his prison. Because we must not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Read. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. You see that? We must be partakers of the gospel. The afflictions of the gospel according to the power of the Most High God. The power that the Lord gave us is his laws. The Most High God says we must go to the street corners and wake the people up. That's what the Lord is looking for, man. The most high God wants black men to stand up, not to cower under the bed, not to be afraid, not to sit behind the woman. Read that verse again, man. The first, the second book of you know what? Hold that. Give me the book of Second Ezra, chapter six. Second Ezra. Okay. Second Ezra. First, give me Second Ezra ten, verse thirty-three. Second Ezra ten, verse thirty-three. Then you're gonna give me Second Ezra chapter six. Watch this. The second, book of Ezra, the second book of Ezra, chapter 10, verse 33. Read. And he said unto me. He's talking to the men. He's talking to Ezra. And he's talking to the men of Israel. This is what the Lord is saying to you, black men. Read. Stand up manfully. He says what? Stand up manfully. Stand up manfully. This is the message to the black man. He says, stand up like a man. Read. And I will advise. The Lord says, and I will advise you. I will counsel you. I will counsel you to go out to the street corners and wake up Israel. Read. Then said I, speak on, my Lord. Yeah, this is what, that's how men respond. He says, speak on, my Lord. Speak on, my Lord. Come on. In me, only forsake me not, lest I die frustrated of my hope. You see that? He said, lest I die frustrated of my hope. That's why people now, they are dying. They are frustrated because they have no hope. Why? Because the prophets have not reached unto them. That's why we're here. To teach the people, to wake them up, to rekindle their spirit in the spirit of Christ. Understand that. Now, give me that in 2nd Ezra chapter 6. Read verse 31. 2nd Ezra 6 verse 31. Watch this. The start of verse 20, 29. Watch this. The second book of Ezra chapter 6 verse 29. Read. After these years shall my son Christ die. No, no. 2nd Ezra 6. 6 verse 29. Watch this. The second book of Ezra chapter 6 verse 29. Go ahead. And when he talked with me, behold, I looked by little and little upon him before whom I stood. The angel, come on. And these words said he unto me, mm -hmm. I am come to show thee the time of the time of the night to come. He says, I'm come to show you the times of the night to come because Ezra was speaking to the angel. The angel was advising him. Ezra was asking a lot of questions and applying that which he was commanded to do. Go ahead. If thou will pray yet more mm -hmm. and fast seven days and again, do what and fast seven days again, that's what the Lord is telling Ezra to do before the war. Go ahead. I shall tell thee greater things by day 
Then I have heard. Then I have heard. Read on. Maybe from the most high. Come on. For thy voice is heard before the most high. He says, because your voice is heard before the most high. Read. For the mighty had seen thy righteous deeds. He says, the mighty, the most high God has seen your righteous dealings. Switch off the heat. Read again. The second book of Ezra, chapter 6, verse 31. Read. If thou wilt pray yet more, mm -hmm. and fast seven days again, Read. I shall tell thee greater things by day than I have heard. Read. For thy voice is heard before the Most High. He says, because your voice is heard before the Most High God. When we keep God's laws, we afflict our souls, we pray to the Most High God, he says, our voice is heard before the Father. Go ahead. For the mighty had seen thy righteous deeds. When we deal righteously before the people, go ahead. He had seen also thy chastity. Our chastity meaning what? Our discipline in his laws. Read. Which thou hast had ever since thy youth. Read. And therefore had he sent me to show thee all these things. Come on. And to say unto thee, mm. be of good comfort. He says do what? Be of good comfort. Be of good comfort. Come on. And fear not. And what? And fear not. And fear not. That's what the Lord is commanding Ezra. He says be of good comfort and fear not. Because right now in the communities, our people are scared. They are fearful. Why? Because you've got gangsters, you've got incarries, you've got... They, they, what are they doing? They are terrorizing our people with guns. They are terrorizing our people by shooting them in broad daylight. And nobody is saying nothing about this thing. Read. And hasten not with the times that are past. Come on. To think vain things. Mm. To think vain things. That thou mayst not hasten from the latter time. Watch this, because we are in the last days right now. We must stay focused. Come on. And it came to pass, after this, that I wept again, mm. and fasted seven days in like manner. Read. That I might fulfill, that I might fulfill the three weeks which he had told me. Read. And in the eighth night was my heart vexed. You go ahead. Was my what? Was my heart back within me again? Read. And I began to speak before the Most High. You see what happens? And I began to speak before the Most High God. Come on. For my spirit was greatly set on fire. For my spirit was greatly set on fire. Because what? He was shown the things that our people are going through. And his spirit was set on fire. Come on. And my soul was in distress. My soul was in distress. Right now we are in distress. Why? Because we see the evil that our people are doing to us. Our people that are terrorizing our own people. Guess what? The most high God says we must stand up this day. Read that again. The second book of Ezra, chapter 6, verse 37. Read. For my spirit was greatly set on fire, mm -hmm. and my soul was in distress. Read. And I said, O Lord, thou speakest from the beginning of the creation, even the first day, and saidest thus, let heaven and earth be made. Read. And thy word was a perfect work. And thy word was a perfect work. The word of the Most High God is perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. That's why the Lord says, Be of good comfort and fear not. So he's talking to you men. Be of good comfort and fear not. But in order for you to do that, you must keep God's laws. You must stay in the spirit and keep God's commandments. That's what he's saying right there. That the Lord may look after us. Give me that in Jury 5 verse 20. Jury Chapter 5 is 20. The most High God is talking to the men. You understand? Who will stand up for me against the evil doers? The Lord is asking. Read what you got. The book of Judith, chapter 5, verse 20. Read. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, if there be sin among these people, come on, and they sin against their God, and we pray God's laws, read. Let us consider. That this shall be their rule. The reason why you see so much evil happening in our communities is because we're breaking God's laws as a nation. That's why there's so much terror from young black men and older black men doing evil, waving guns, because they think that's the end and all and be all. No, 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 no. They don't understand. Or, yes, you're waving a gun today, but when you die, the Lord will torment you after death by pain. That's what you don't understand. So the Lord give me that in Luke 12 verse 4. To comfort you men. To understand what's going on here. You die in this life is like waking up in the kingdom with Christ in your face. That's what you need to understand here. Read what you got, man. The book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 4. Read. And I, and I said unto you, my friend, be not afraid of them that kill the body. Read again. The book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 4. And I say unto you, my friend. Read. Be not afraid of them that kill the he body. He said, don't be afraid of them that kill the body. That's why these incarnates, these gangsters, they are terrorizing the community because why? They think we are afraid of them that kill the body. 
That's why the people don't speak up because of fear of them that kill the body. The Lord says, don't be afraid of that thing. Read again. The book of Luke chapter 12 verse 4. Read. And I say unto you, my friend, be not afraid of them that kill the body. He says, don't be afraid of them that kill the body. Go ahead. And after that, have no more that they can do. Because after they kill the body, there's nothing they can do to you after that. That's it. What are they going to do? Nothing. They have no access to you in the afterlife. Read. But I will, but I will, but I will forewarn you. But I will forewarn you. But the Lord says, but I'm going to warn you. You understand? I'm going to warn you for the future. Go ahead. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. He says he's going to warn us for the future. In the future, who we must be afraid of. Go ahead. Fear him, which after he had killed, had power to cast into hell. You see that thing? He says you must fear the one that after he killed you, he has power to do what? To cast into hell. To cast into hell. To do what? To torment you after death. He says you must be afraid of him. Don't be afraid of man that wants to terrorize you, waving guns in your face. Listen, he says, don't be afraid of that boy. He says, he's a boy, he's not a man. He says, don't be afraid of that. Be afraid of the one that once he kills you, he has power to cast you into hell. He says, be afraid of him. Who's that? That's the most like God. Give me that in Hebrews 9, verse 27. He says, be afraid of that one. Don't be afraid of the one that will be waving a gun in your face. Don't be afraid of that one. Be afraid of the one that after he kills you, You've got power to cast you into hell. He says, be afraid of that one. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. Watch this. Come on. And as it is appointed unto men once to die. He says, as it is appointed unto men once to die. Come on. But after this judgment. But after this, the judgment. So you die in this life, but after that you die. The Lord says, I'm going to judge you after death. That's the one that the Lord says, we must be afraid of him. That's the most High God, the Father sitting upon his throne. He's the one that we must be afraid of, the Lord is saying. We must be afraid of him. Don't be afraid of niggas waving guns in your face. Give me that in 2 Exodus 9, verse 22. Actually, give me 2 Exodus 9 and 9. 2 Exodus 9, verse 9. We come in here to Judith, chapter 5, verse 20. Hold that. We come in back. 2 Exodus 9, verse 9. Watch this. The second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 9. Read. Then shall they be in pitiful case. Because these ones that are waving guns, they are going to be in pitiful case on this day when the Lord returns. Come on. Which now have abused my ways. They have abused the ways of the Lord, man. They are abusing the people. They are abusing the ways of the Lord. They are going around. They are waving guns in our faces. They are killing our people, man, in broad daylight, in cold blood. Read. And they that have cast them away despitefully. They've cast away the laws of God despitefully. They hate correction. They hate the laws of God. Read. Shall dwell in torment. They're gonna dwell in torment after death. Read. For such is their life. For such is in their life have received benefit. Because in their life they have received benefits. You know what the benefit they receive? Give me to 27, 24. This is the benefit that they receive in their life. In the life that they are living now, so-called, the so-called life they are living now, which is no life at all. This is the benefit they receive after they abuse the ways of the Lord by terrorizing our communities and killing our brothers and sisters in cold blood. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27, verse 24. Watch this. Read. Cursed be he that smited his neighbor secretly. Cursed be he that smited his neighbor secretly. Come on. And all the people shall, shall say amen. And all the people shall say amen. Meaning, cursed be the man that kills his brother secretly. Meaning what? You kill your brother when nobody knows. You commit murder and nobody knows. But watch the next verse. Go ahead. Cursed be he that taketh the reward to slay an innocent person. You see that then? Cursed be the one that does what now? Cursed be he that taketh the reward. That taketh what? That taketh the reward. That's the benefit. Incar is because Incar is an assassin. Incar is an assassin. What do they do? They take reward to kill somebody. That's an assassin. That's Incar. That's what the Bible is talking about. Incar is in the Bible, man. They are in the Holy Bible. Read the Bible again, verse 25. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 27, verse 25. Read. Cursed be he that taketh the reward to slay an innocent person. You see, they take reward to kill their own brother in cold blood. They take reward. That's the benefit they are receiving for killing their own brother that look like them in cold blood right in front of the people. And the world, the people shall say what? And all the people shall say amen. And all the people shall say amen. And the Most High God put the Spirit upon our forefather Moses to teach us this law. And our people broke all these laws. Next verse. Read. 
cursed be he that comment that confirmeth not all the words of this law mm. to do them. You see that he says, cursed be he that confirmeth not to do all the words of this law and 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 to do them. That's what the Most High God is saying. So go back to Second Ezra nine, Second Ezra chapter nine. You understand? Second Ezra nine verse eleven. Watch this. The second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 11. No, verse 10. 10. Come on. The second book of Ezra, chapter 9, verse 10. Read. Right. For such is in the for such as in their life have received benefits. You see that because the incarnates they receive benefits for killing their own. They receive benefits for killing their brother and sisters in cold blood. They receive reward for that thing. The Lord says, Cursed be he that has received reward for killing his own brother. Go ahead. And have not known me. And they've not known the Lord. They don't, they don't give a damn about the most High God. They don't care about their own people. They hate their own people, man. Read. And they that have loathed my law. They hate God's laws. And they that have hate the law, the law, the law of the laws of God. Read. While they while they had yet liberty. Because they still had a chance to get it together. They still had the chance to change their mind, not to go out and kill their own brother in cold blood. Read. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them. And when the place of repentance is open unto them. What did they do? Understood not. They did not understand. They didn't want to hear it. We but despised it. But hated it. They hated to get their minds right. They didn't want to get it together. Read. The same must know it after death by pain. The same people that go around killing their own brother for reward. You understand? They kill their own brother for a price. The Lord says they must what? The same, the must, same people that do that thing. There was must, there must what? What must happen to them? Must know it after death by pain. They must know the pain of the Lord after they die. The Lord says, "I'm gonna torment you after death. I'm gonna look for you in after you die, and I'm gonna torment you. I'm gonna torture you forever after you die." That's why the Lord says, "This is that the Most High God is the one you must be afraid of." Go back to Luke twelve and verse four again. Read verse 13 in 2nd Ezra. 2nd Ezra 9 verse 13. Watch this. The second book of Ezra chapter 9 verse 13. Read. And therefore, be thou not curious. He says, don't be curious now. Come on. How the ungodly shall, pay, shall be paid. He says, he don't worry about how the ungodly is going to be punished. But what you must know is they are going to be punished. You understand? They're going to feel pain after death. Read. And when? But inquire how the righteous shall be saved. He says, inquire how the righteous will be saved. How is there those that keep in the laws of God, how they're going to get delivered? He says, be, uh, be interested in that. Read. Who's the world is? Because the world belongs to the righteous. The world, the, right, the world has no place for those that are ungodly. Those that are going around waving guns, killing their own brothers and sisters in cold blood. The world was not made for them. They're supposed to be put to death. That's what the Lord is saying. Read. And for whom the world is created. The world was created for those that obey God's laws. Those that don't want to go obey God's laws, the world was not created for them. That's what the Lord is telling you, man. That's what the Lord is saying. Go back to Judith now. Chapter 5 is 20. Judith. 5 is 20 again. The book of Judith. Chapter 5 is 20. Read. Now therefore... My Lord and Governor, go ahead. If there be any error in this people, if there be any error in these people, come on, and they sin against their God, and we break God's laws, we sin against our God. Read. Let us consider that this shall be their rule, because that's how we get ruined. That's how we became ruined as a nation because of sin. Sin is why our nation is destroyed right now. Sin is the reason why the communities are terrorized by gangsters, by incarries. That's why, because of sin. That's why the community is in shambles right now. Read. And let us go up and we shall overcome. You see that that's why the nations now they are able because the black men don't make no guns. The black man don't make no, the black man does not own a company to manufacture guns. So who makes these guns? The other nations. They are the ones that have the manpower, the economic power, the military power to make guns. And where do they give the guns to? They give the guns to young black men all the black men that hate their own people to come in our community to terrorize the community. That's what they do. Read. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, because if there be no sin in our nation, if we keep the laws of God, what's going to happen? Let my Lord now pass by. Let my Lord then pass by. Go ahead. Lest their Lord defend. Because the Lord does what? Lest their Lord defend. When we keep the laws of God, the Lord defends us. When we keep God's commandments, 
the Lord, he defends us. The most high God, he looks after us. Understand that. The Lord defends us when we keep his laws. The Lord does not defend us when we break his laws. Read again. The, the book of Judah, chapter 5, verse 21. Read. But if there be no iniquity in their nation. If there be no sin in our nation. Come on. Let my Lord now pass by. Read. Lest their Lord defend them. Go ahead. And their God be for them. Then their our God be for us. And the Lord be with us. Because we're keeping his laws. Read. And we become a reproach before all the world. Because then other nations and these gangsters, they will become a reproach before all the world. Because the Lord will bring forth the swift judgment if they don't repent. They must repent. Understand that? They must repent, of course. Now go back to Psalms 94, verse 16. One more again. Of Psalms chapter 94, verse 16. Read. Really? Who will rise up for me against the evil doers? That's what the Lord is asking. Who will rise up for me against the evil doers? Come on. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? The workers of iniquities is in time. These gangsters in our communities terrorizing our fathers, our mothers, our children, our sons and daughters. They are terrorizing whole communities because of these guns that they are waving and using them to kill our brothers and sisters in cold blood. In three corners, open broad daylight. Read the Bible again. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Read. Who will rise up for me against the evil doers? Who will rise up for me, the Lord is asking, against the evil doers? Read. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Come on. Unless the Lord had been my help. And the Lord, because the Lord is our help. Understand that. The Lord is our help. Read. My soul had almost dwelt in silence. You see that? Because if the Lord is not helping us, that's why because our people don't know the Lord. That's why their soul is dwelling in silence. That's why they don't want to say nothing. Because they don't know that the God of Israel will defend us when we keep his commandments. You understand? Read that verse again. 16 and 17. One more again. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Read. Who will rise up for me against the evil doers? Read. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Against the, the workers of iniquities is the gangsters, is incarnates, terrorizing our nation, man. Read. Unless the Lord has been my help. The Lord is our help. That's what you need to understand, black man. The Lord is our help. Read. My soul had almost dwelt in silence. Because I was, I, that's why our people don't want to say nothing. That's why people are afraid. They don't want to say nothing. Although they see it, they saw it, they saw the faces of the people that have done it. They don't want to say nothing. Why? Because why? They are afraid. Why are they afraid? Because they don't know this Bible. That's why we know it. We teach it. We apply it. So our people may repent. And the Most High God will raise an army to fight against the wickedness that is taking place in our nation. Man. Understand that thing. The Lord will defend us. The Lord is with us when we keep his commandments. Read that verse again. The same way the Lord was with our forefathers in the past, was with our forefather Abraham, was with our forefather Isaac, was with our forefather Jacob, was, was with our forefather Nehemiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Joshua, Moses. The Lord is with us on this day. Read the verse again. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Read. Who will rise up for me against the evil doers? Against the evil doers. Come on. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Against the workers of iniquities. Come on. Unless the Lord had, had been my help. Read. My soul had almost dwelt in silence. We're not going to keep quiet. Give me that in Isaiah. Give me Isaiah chapter 62 verse 7. Watch this. Because what's happening is that, mom's the word right now. The people are afraid and, the, the, and these gangsters, they know it. That's why they, they know that the people are afraid and the, that's why they don't even hide. They do it in broad daylight. They don't even wear nothing on their faces because they are not afraid because they know nobody's going to do nothing. Nobody's going to stand up. It's going to be the three monkeys. See no evil. You understand? Report no evil. You understand? Just watch it and do nothing. Read the Bible. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse 7. Read it. And give him no rest. Seven and six, seven and six. Let's start there. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy wall. We are the watchmen. Understand that. We are the watchmen. The Lord says, I've set up watchmen upon thy walls. Read. Oh, Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the 12 tribes of Israel. That's Jerusalem. He says, I've set up watchmen 
in thy walls. Go ahead. We shall never hold their peace. We're not going to hold our peace. The Lord says, don't be quiet. You must speak up about the evil that you see in the nation, man. Read. We shall never hold their peace day nor night. He says, we must never hold our peace day nor night. And where are we day or no night? We are in the street corners teaching the people to repent. Guess what? And as we're teaching out there, we have a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Read the Bible again. The book of Isaiah chapter 6, 2 verse 6. Read. I have said watchmen upon thy walls. Come on. O Jerusalem. Read. We shall never hold their peace. They, we will never hold our peace. We're not going to keep quiet. Read. Day no night. Read. Ye, ye, ye that make mention of the Lord. Ye that make mention of the Lord. Who makes mention of the Lord? The prophets. The prophets make mention of the Lord. Read. Keep not silence. He says keep not silence. Don't be quiet. You understand? The Lord says we must not keep quiet. Give me that in Isaiah 30 verse 20. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 20. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 20. Read. And though the Lord give you bread of adversity. The bread of adversity is the afflictions that have come upon us as a nation. Read. And the water of affliction. The water of affliction because we cry and cry day in and day out. We are scared. We are afraid. Our people are terrorized by Gentiles and Incarnates in the nation. But read. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. The law says the teachers will not be removed from a corner. Where are the teachers going to be found? In the steep corners. Read. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Your, your eyes going to see your teachers. You are going to see the teachers in the steep corners teaching the laws of God. Read. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee. Because some will be passing by hearing the word of God behind them. Because what? They are walking in the wrong direction. Read. Saying, this is the way. We're going to show them this. This is the way. The thing of waving guns and killing your people, that's not the way, man. That's the way of Satan. Read. Walk ye in it. Walk in the way of the Lord. Come on. When ye turn to the right hand. When you turn to the right hand. And when you turn to the left. And when you turn to the left. Go ahead. Ye shall defile also the covering of the graven image. Because these guns that these gangsters are wavering, these, that, that's their graven images. They worship them guns. Because he thinks that when he's got a gun, that means that like he's all with God now. Nobody can touch him. Because he thinks he worships, that's why they worship them. They live by the sword, they're going to die by it. Understand that? Because that's what they live by. They live by that gun, they're going to die by that gun. Understand that? Read the Bible again. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21. Read. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying. Read. This is the way. This is the way. Come on. Walk ye in it. Walk in the way that God has commanded you, black man. Read. When you turn to the right hand. Read. And when you turn to the left. Come on. You shall defile also the covering of thy graven image. That gun that you are wavering, that's a graven image, man. That you worship that. That's your God. Go ahead. The graven images of silver and of the ornament of thy molten image. You see that, that, God, that gun right there, that's the ornament of that, the molten ornament of silver. They trust upon that thing, man. Read. Thou shalt cast them away as a menstrual cloth. He says you must cast it away like a temple. That's what the black man must do with that gun that is wavering all, of, all, all over the place. He must cast it away like a menstrual rag. That's what the Lord is saying. That's what the most High God is commanding the black man to do. To put the gun down and pick up this Bible. How about that? Is the black man not going to do that? All these gangsters in Kari that are terrorizing the community, he's not going to put the gun down and pick up the Bible because it means he has to sit down and study and apply and go out to the street corners and teach the people the laws of God. He's not going to do it because he's a coward. Coward with guns. Prophets and, and prophets and leaders, they pick up this Bible, they go to the street corners and teach the people the laws of God. That's what leaders do. Understand that. Read again, man. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 22. Read. Ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver. Read. And the ornament of thy molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as a menstrual cloth. The Lord, that's what the Lord is commanding the black man. The black man waving his gun. The Bible, the most High God will throw that gun away like you're throwing away a, a dirty temple. And pick up this Bible, man. Pick up the Bible and go out to the street corners. How about that? And then I'll get you just my respect. But as, as long as you continue to wave the gun around, listen, you're not going to get more respect from me. You're not going to get more respect from the Most High either. You understand? The Most High disrespects you. Understand that? The Most High hates your gut until you put that gun down and pick up this Bible. 
put the gun down and pick up the Bible, and then we're going to see you as a man. Understand what the Bible is saying, man. So go back to where he was at. The book of Isaiah, chapter 6. Read. And give no rest till he establishes, until he maketh Jerusalem a praise in the earth. The Lord says we must not keep quiet until he does what? He makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Right now, Jerusalem is not a praise in the earth. We are not a praise in the earth. Why? Because we are in the midst of evil, man. That's what the Lord is saying. We need to wake the hell up. All this evil that's taking place in our nation, it requires black men to stand up. Read the Bible again, verse 7. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse 7. Read. And give him no rest till he establishes, until he maketh Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Verse 10. Verse 10. Go through and go through the gate. Prepare ye the way of the people. That's what the Lord is commanding black men to do. Go through the gates. Go to the steep corners and prepare the way for the people. The same way Elijah paved the way for us, we must pave the way for Christ's return. That's what we must do. And by so doing, we pave the way for the people. Read the Bible again. The book of Isaiah chapter 62 verse 10. Read. Go through. Go through the gate. Prepare ye the way for the people. Prepare ye the way of the people. The way of the people is this Bible. The way for them to get delivered when the Lord returns. Read. Cast up. Cast up the highway. Cast up the highway. Because where, who is in the highways? Our people. Read. Gather out the stones. Mm. Lift up a standard for the people. Lift up a standard for the people. The standard is this Bible. The standard of living. The Bible teaches you the standard. gives you the standard of living. The most that God has given us this Bible to teach the people the way they must live. Understand that. Our people don't know how to live right now. That's why they are terrorizing the community the way they are doing. And guess what? They think they're going to get away with it. They are not going to get away with this thing. There is a God. Understand that. There is a God who brings forth judgment unto men that do all, all these evil that they are doing in our nation. Read that Bible again. It goes by Isaiah chapter 62 verse 10. Read. Go through. Go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Read. Cast up. Cast up the highway. Get out the stone. Lift up a standard for the people. Do what? Lift up a standard for the people. Lift up a standard for the people, the Lord. This is the standard. The Bible is the standard that the Lord said we must lift up. We must teach it to our people. So these gangsters can put these guns down and pick up this Bible. That's what they're supposed to be doing, man. That's why right now, give me that in Surah 33 verse 27. The reason why these gangsters are doing so many, so much evil in our nation is because why? They are idle. They don't know what to do with the time they've got. They don't know what to do with themselves. That's why they're doing so much evil in the nation. Read that. The book of chapter 33, verse 27. Read. Send them to labor. To labor in the Lord's vineyard. To labor in the Lord's vineyard. Send him to labor. You understand? Give me that in Luke 10 and 1. Send him to labor, the Lord is saying. Send him to labor. Because right now, young black men, they are idle. They don't know what to do with their time. That's why when they're sitting, they're planning evil and they come to practice the evil in the community. We what you got. The book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. After these things, the Lord appointed another 70 also. Read. And sent them two and two before his face into every city. Go ahead. And place. Read. Whether he himself would come. Read. Therefore said he unto them, mm. the harvest truly is great. The harvest is great. Meaning the work is great. There's too much work to be done. Go ahead. But the laborers are few. But the what now? The laborers are few. The what? The laborers are few. But the laborers are few. You know why the laborers are few? It's because the majority of the people that are supposed to be laboring, what are they doing? Go back to Surah 33, 27. The prophet is chapter 33, verse 27. Read. Send him to that he be not idle. Because the majority, what are they doing? They are idle. They are idle. They are idle, they are, what are they, and when they are idle, what do they do? Go ahead. For idleness teacheth much evil. That's the evil they are learning when they are sitting idle doing nothing. Because again, they are doing nothing. They are sitting idle, the Lord is saying. They are not doing anything. That's what the Lord is saying. They are just sitting doing nothing. They are idle, they are planning evil. And they go into the community, they execute the evil that they planned while they were sitting idle. That's what the Most High God is saying right now. We must wake up. We have too much work to do. And it's the job out. This our job is to go out there to teach the people the laws of God. You men, you need to stay focused. You need to stay in this Bible, man. You need to stay prepared because we are at war and we are going to war. 
boots on the ground, man. Understand that. Read the Bible again. The COVID is yet, chapter 33, verse 27. Read. Send him to labor, that he be not idle. Read. For idleness teacheth much evil. Because idleness teacheth much evil. That's why these young black men, they are sitting idle in the community, in the street corners. They are not doing nothing. Why? Because they don't know what their job is. They don't know what their job is, according to what this Bible is saying. Luke 14, verse 23. This is their job. They've forgotten their job, man. They've forgotten what their job is. That's why they are idle doing evil. Read it. Because the gangsters and in cabins, in cab is an assassin. An assassin, that's why when you watch movies, what is he doing? He's not doing anything. He's waiting for a call. So that means while he's waiting for a call, what is he doing? Nothing. He just sits there. Until a call comes in to say, listen, here's the money, go and kill such and such. That is an evil they are doing, man. Blood money. They carrying are walking around with blood money. They are driving these expensive cars with blood money. You understand? Now, go back, read the Bible again, read the verse again, man. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 27. Read. Send him to labor, that he be not idle. Mm. For idleness teaches much evil. You see that? Because idleness, it teaches much evil. It teaches much evil. Now go back. Isaiah 62. Read verse 10 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse 10. Read. Go through. Go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Mm. Cast up, cast up the highway. Gather out, a, gather out the stones. Lift up a standard for the people. Lift up a standard for the people, for the men to stand up. Because this war, the most High God is calling the men first to stand up to go to war. You are 20 years and above, you are fit to go to war. That's what the Lord is saying. Understand that, men. Because right now you see 20 year old men, 20, you see 20 year old and up. What are they doing? They are smoking weed. They don't know what to do with themselves. Eh? You understand? They're just sitting idle, doing nothing, drinking all day. The most high God don't want that thing, man. The most high God wants black men to stand up and to teach their people the laws of God. So we can do right. So we can clean up our nation. Because our nation is under attack from within and from without. So the war is great. That's why the Lord is saying what he says in Luke 10 and 2. Now give me Luke 14, 23. Because this is the job. Young black men and older black men, they've forgotten the job, man. The job is to teach the young men how to be men. And to teach the young men how to war. How to go to the street corners and wake up the people. Because that's the job, man. Read what you got. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. Read. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges. Go to the highways and hedges. That was says, cast up. Cast up. You understand? Go out to the highways and hedges. Read. And compel them to come in. And force them to come into this truth. Force them to repent. Force them to show, force them so they see the issues that are in the community so they can stand up and see the solution on how to resolve these problems. Read that Bible again, man. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. Read. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the high and hedge. Read. And compel them to come in. And compel them to come in. Come on. That my house may be filled. That the house of Israel may be filled that the Apostle James was writing to. Understand that thing. Now watch this. Give me the book of Hosea. Hosea chapter 4 and 1. Hosea 4 verse 1. Because this is the job that the Most High God has ordained to the black man. And for the black man. Understand that. Hosea 4 and 1. The book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 1. Read. Hear the word of the Lord. Ye children of Israel. The most high God is writing to the 12 tribes of Israel. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Come on. For the Lord had a con for the Lord had a controversy with the with the inhabitants of the land. Get the definition of controversy. He says the Lord has controversy with the inhabitants of the land. The most high God has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Let's get the definition of controversy. Let's get the definition of controversy, man. Let's get there. Get the definition of controversy. Put it on the screen so the people can see it. Blow it up some. Because we cannot see it. It's too small. Do you see it? 
Okay, read it. Definition of controversy. Read. Pro prolonged, prolonged public disagreement or hatred discussion. Or oh, heated discussion. It says prolonged public disagreement or heated discussion. The law, the most that God has a prolonged because we've been in captivity for too long. That was it's prolonged. We've been in captivity for too long. From the time we left Egypt, we still be in captivity. Read that definition again. Definition of controversy. Prolonged public disagreement or heated discussion. The Lord has a prolonged public disagreement or heated discussion with us through his book. Through using the nations to oppress us. The most that God has a controversy with Zion. He's got a prolonged public disagreement or heated discussion with us. Now go back to Hosea 4 and 1. One more again. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1. Read. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel. Come on. For the Lord had a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. The most high God had a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. We are the inhabitants of the land. Read. Because there is no truth. There is no truth. Get that in Psalms 119 verse 142. Let's see what the truth is. He says, because there is no truth within the, within the inhabitants of the land. Who are the inhabitants of the land? The 12 tribes of Israel. We are in the inhabitants of the land, in the lands of our captivities right now in these last days. Okay? You got it? Psalms 119 verse 142. Read it. The book of Psalms chapter 119 verse 142. Come on. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Read. And thy law is the truth. And thy what? Thy law is the truth. The laws of God is the truth. That's the truth. The law, the most that God says, there is no law in our nation. That, that means that means there's disorder and chaos. Because when there's no law and order, there's disorder and chaos. And that's what you are seeing right now. And these gangsters, these assassins, these intervents, they are taking advantage of that. Because there's no law, there's no order in our nation, there's disorder and chaos. That's why they think it's okay to come in our community and terrorize and kill the people in cold blood they know nobody gonna say nothing because why there's chaos and disorder we are here with the laws of god to restore law and order understand that so go back hosea 4 let's go to hosea chapter 4 verse 1 read hear the word of the lord you children of israel come on for the lord had the controversy with the inhabitants of the land go ahead because there is no truth. Because there is no truth. There is no law and order in our nation. Go ahead. No mercy. There is no mercy among the 12 tribes of Israel. You don't have mercy towards your brother. That's why if you think it's okay to go out, wave a gun in his face, and kill him in cold blood, right in front of the people in broad daylight. Because there is no mercy. Read. No knowledge of God in the land. Because there is no knowledge of God among the inhabitants of the land. The knowledge of God is the laws of God. That's why now there's disorder and chaos. Next verse. Read. By swearing. By what? By swearing. Because they like to swear. They like to say, but but you go out and kill your brother in cold blood. You don't turn in gulungulu. The, the God you worship is that gun that you have. That's the God you worship, man. And you hate your brother. Read. By swearing and lying. By swearing and lying. And these same gang gangster lishas, hmm? who's magnificent, they are the ones that you see in the street corners, man. They are the ones that are going around waving guns in their face, in our faces. Give one who's magnificent. That's the one. That's them. Who gangster lishas? That's them. Read that Bible again, man. Verse two. It goes Hosea chapter four, verse two. Read by swearing and lying and lying because they love to lie. Read and killing and what and killing. They love to kill. They kill their own brothers in cold blood and they know nothing gonna be done about it. Read. And stealing. And they steal too. Go ahead. And committing adultery. And they commit adultery. They sleep around popping babies they cannot take care of. Read. They break out. They break out meaning they fight. Read. And blood touches blood. And because they fight their own people. That's why they break out and blood touches blood. Killing your own brother in cold blood. That's what we're reading here. Read again, man. The book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 2. Read. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Read. Therefore shall the, Lord, shall the land mourn. That's why now the land is mourning now. 
That's why it says Judah money. Why? Because the case they of language. There is no leaders to stand up to correct the people to show the people the laws of God. The great way to go, which is the laws of God. That's why it says, therefore shall the what? Therefore shall the land mourn. That's why now our people are terrorizing the communities because of these gangster leashes. They were magnificent. Hmm? They are the ones that are terrorizing our communities, man. Who did the carries the assassins? They are the ones. An assassin's creed. What is their creed? A thing that cannot be changed. A, a creed, a decree. That's a law that cannot be changed. Meaning what? We paid you, go out and kill such and such. Read. And, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish. Do you see that? That was it, the case there of language. Read. And everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beast of the, of the field. The beast of the field is these young men that are out of order out here, terrorizing our communities. They are the beasts. You understand? They become Iran. You understand that? Read. And with the fowls of heaven. And with the fowls of heaven, read. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. You see that thing? That's talk about the people. Go ahead, watch this. Yet let no man strive, nor reprove another. For thy people are as they that strive with the priest. You see that thing? Because they fight with the prophets. They fight with those that teach them the laws of God to walk the right way. Why? Because they are addicted to sin. They are addicted to gangsterism. They are ad addicted to terrorism. They thrive in that world because they know the people live in fear of them. But we know the truth, man. We know the truth, brothers. We need to put boots on the ground. I need you men to be ready. We're going to war. Understand that. Read that verse again. The book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 4. Read. Yet, yet let no man strive, nor reprove another. For thy people are as they that strive with the priest. Read. Therefore, Shall thou fall in thy day? You see, shall thou fall in the day? Our people, they are killing our people in broad daylight. That's why the people, they kill the people in the day. In the daylight, man. Read. Therefore, shall thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the right, in the night. In the night. Because guess what? The, what was the prophets doing? They were not correcting the people. Read. And I will destroy thy mother. The most high goes, I'm going to destroy your mothers because these gangster leashes, guess what they do? These are mama's babies. If you investigate, guess what? You're going to find out these are mama's boys. These mama's boys, they become what? They become gays or they, can, they become homo thugs. They become thugs in the community. Why? Because why? They have a short fuse. They have no honor. They have no discipline. Nothing. That's why any type, the way they resolve conflict, is to shoot you in the face in cold blood. That's how they resolve conflicts, man. Read that verse again. The, the book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 5. I hold that. I'm going to show you that. Give me the book of Isaiah 3 verse 12. Isaiah 3 verse 12. I'm going to show you that. Because they are the ones that are terrorizing the community. But watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Because when you investigate, you're going to come to find out what a lot of these young men and older men also that are going around waving guns and shooting guns and killing their own people in cold blood in broad daylight. Yeah, when you investigate, they are being raised by their mothers. Their fathers are not there. They are raised to be emotional. They are being raised by their mothers to be emotional. So that's why, that's why a man when he's emotional and you give him a gun, what do you think is going to happen? He's emotional. He don't know how to deal with his emotions because he's not being... He's not being corrected by his father. So now, every, every, every situation that comes, in, uh, comes up in his life, he resolves it how? Emotionally. So now when you put a gun in his hand, what do you think you're going to do in the community? He will terrorize the community, which is what we have right now. Read it. The book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Read. As for my people. As for my people. Our people, the black men and black women. Read. Children are their oppressors. The children are oppressing our mothers and fathers right now. The children are oppressing our families, man. The children, the children, young black men waving guns. They are oppressing Abu Koko, Abu Mkulu. That's what they are doing in the community, man. Read. And women rule over them. You see, that's the thing right there. It says, and women rule over them. They are being ruled over by their mothers. They are being ruled over by their women. They are being raised by their women. And because why? The father is not there. Because the father, only a man can raise, only a man can raise a boy to be a man. A man can raise a boy to be a man. 
Because a man will be able to correct him, will speak to him like a man. The reason why you see these young black men that are emotional, you understand? They always, whenever, they cannot do no wrong. Whenever they do something wrong, their mothers come to the rescue. That's a mama's boy right there. A mama's boy, they are the ones that are waving guns in the community and terrorizing our nation. They are the ones. That's what God is saying. Read again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 12. Read. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Children are their oppressors. Children, these young black men with guns, gangster leashes, with magnificent. They are the ones. Read. And women rule over them. And women rule over them. Meaning what? They are emotional. They are being ruled over by their women because of their emotions. Read. Oh, my people. Oh, my people. Come on. They which lead The thee. women that are leading you. The women that are leading men. That's what God is saying. Women that are leading men, they are raising monsters. These monsters, they are the ones that are terrorizing the community. Read. Cause thee to err. They cause you to err. They cause you to sin. They cause you to kill. They cause you to commit murder. Read. And destroy the way of thy path. They destroy the way of your path of being a man. Because a man can only raise a boy to be a man. That's what God is saying, man. Second Genesis 5 is 8. The reason why you see these monsters in our communities is because many of them, they grow up in single parent households. Their father is not around. So they don't know how to deal with a man. So they don't know how to resolve conflicts. You understand? Read what you got. The second book of Ezra, chapter 5, verse 8. Read. There shall be a confusion also in many places. The confusion that you are seeing in many places is the confusion you see in our communities right now. Young black men don't know how to be men. You know why? Because they don't listen to their fathers, but they listen to their mothers because their mothers defend them when they do evil. You see it all the time. A young man, he does evil. When his father corrects him, here comes the mother. The mother say, no, but hey, ungam, ungam, che, lin, hey, si, hey, agelam, to, anami, hey, what, what, that's what they do. And that's why these young black men, they disrespect, they go to into the community, they terrorize because you, are, you know what? Their father has no say because the mother has a big mouth. That's what the Bible is saying. That's what God is saying, man. Read. There shall be a confusion also in many places. There shall be a confusion also in many places. Come on. And the fire shall be oft sent out. And this fire that the Lord is bringing into the community is what you are seeing right now. Read. The fire shall be oft sent out again. Read. And the wild beasts shall change their places. Watch this. And menstruous women. And these wicked women, these unclean women, you understand? Read. Shall bring forth monsters. They're going to give birth to monsters. These monsters, they are the ones that are terrorizing the communities right now. They are the ones that are killing other black men in cold blood in broad daylight. Because they have no fear of the Lord. But guess what? The prophets are going to bring the fear back. The prophets will bring the fear of the Lord back. And guess what? They're going to fight with the prophets. But the Lord is with us. Understand that thing. You understand? So go back to where he was at. Hosea chapter 4. Read verse 5 again. The book of Hosea chapter 4 verse 5. Read. Therefore shall thou fall in the day. And the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night. You see that? Go ahead. And I will destroy thy mother. The Lord says, I'm going to destroy your mother. He has talked about Jerusalem because we are Jerusalem. Give me that in Baruch chapter 4. And I will destroy thy mother. That's why we're kicked out of our homeland. Because we did what? We did much evil. Give me that in Baruch chapter 4. Read verse 8. The book of Baruch chapter 4 verse 8. Watch this. Read. Ye have forgotten the everlasting God that brought you up. We have forgotten the everlasting God that brought us up. Read. And ye have grieved Jerusalem mm. that nursed you. We grieved Jerusalem, our mother that nursed us. Go ahead. For when she saw the wrath of God coming upon you. Because Jerusalem here is referred to as a mother. You understand? She saw the wrath of God coming upon us. That's why now we are no longer in the land. We are in the lands of our captivities right now. Go ahead. She said, Hearken. O ye that dwell about Zion, read. God had brought up, God had brought upon me great mourning. The Lord is gonna bring, bring upon Jerusalem great mourning. Go ahead. For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, read, which the everlasting brought upon them, read, with joy and hurt them. Go ahead. But sent them away with weeping and mourning. You see that he says, but I sent you away with weeping and mourning. Watch this next verse. Go ahead. Let no man rejoice over me. 
a widow and forsaken of many. You see that he says, I'm a widow and I'm a forsaken of many. Who fors- who, who, who's the many that are forsaken? He's talking about the sons and daughters of Jacob. Go ahead. Who for the sins of my children am left desolate. You see that Jerusalem right now is left desolate. Look at us, man. We, are, we, are, we, look like, we live like savages now as a nation. That's why the nations, they don't want anything to do with us. And we still don't want to ask the questions and consult the Bible and listen to the prophets on the street corners to show us the way to see, to show us what's really going on. Why is there so much killing in our nation? Read merciless killings. That's what you see. You see merciless killings because of these monsters that are roaming in the community. Read. Let no man rejoice over me, a widow and forsaken of men. Read. Who for the sins of my children am left desolate because they because they departed from the law of God. Because they departed from the laws of God. He's telling you why we are desolate as a nation. Because we broke God's laws. So go back, Hosea 4, read verse 6 now. Let's go for Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Read. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's what you are seeing right now. So much destruction and merciless killings in our nation and our communities. Nobody didn't say nothing. Because why? These gangsters, who gangster nations live with magnificent, they are terrorizing and putting our people in fear that they cannot say nothing. Give me that in Leviticus 5 and 1. They are putting our people in fear. That's why our people are afraid to speak up. But the prophets will not be afraid to speak up. That's why the people hated the prophets always. Because the prophets never went into the community to speak good words to the people. They went to the communities to warn the people of the rest of the law that will come upon them if they don't repent. Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 5 verse 1. Read. And if a soul sin and hear the voice of swearing. You see, if a soul sin and you hear the voice of swearing. What was the sin? Murder in the community. Here in Carpentay, murder in broad daylight in cold blood. Read. And he's a witness. And you are a witness. You see the matter go down. You see it taking place. Read. Whether he had seen or you've seen it or known of it. And you know about it. If he if he do not utter if it. If you don't say nothing, God says, what's going to happen? Then he shall bear his iniquity. God says, the same killing that you just saw is going to come to your house. That's what the Lord is saying. That's why he see the killing don't stop in our nation. Because why? He says, don't snitch. They say snitches get stitches. That's what they say. That's why the killing don't stop in our nation because why? They have a demonic code that they have. Snitches get stitches. Don't say nothing. Read. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Go back. Hosea 4 verse 6. Let's go Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You see that? God says his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Look at the destruction that's taking place in our nation, man. Read. Because thou hast rejected, because thou hast rejected knowledge, because you've rejected knowledge, God is saying, hold that, give me that in Malachi 2 verse 7. Let's see what the knowledge is. That God says, we as a people, we have rejected, which is why as a nation we are destroyed. Look at the merciless killings that are taking place, man. Don't nobody say nothing. Because people are supposed to be toy trained right now. They are not. You know why they are not? Because incarnate has brought, has brought fear and torment and terrorism in our nation. That's why nobody's doing it. That's why nobody's saying nothing. That's why even the police don't say nothing. There was supposed to be a, a thing saying, say, say, this, is, this is a crime scene. You don't see there's nothing like that. The book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 7. Read. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Go ahead. And they should seek the law at his mouth. You see, they should seek the law at his mouth. Read. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. So the knowledge is the law that must be found at the mouth of the priest. That's the knowledge. Go back to Hosea. Chapter 4 verse 6. The book of Hosea. Chapter 4 verse 6. Read. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. He says his people, the Israelites, they are destroyed for lack of knowing God's laws. Go ahead. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Because our people have rejected the laws of God. Come on. I will also reject thee. That's why, you see, the, an example of the Lord rejecting us. Look at the merciless killings that is taking place. That's an example of the Lord rejecting us, man. Look at us being in captivity, living in the ghettos, living, living like rats. Why? Because the Lord says we have rejected his commandments. Go ahead. That thou shalt be no, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Meaning we will not be in the coming kingdom if we keep going like this. Read. 
sing. Thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. Because we've forgotten the laws of God, he's saying. Come on. I will also forget thy children. That's why now our children that get lost, they get stolen, they get kidnapped. You understand? They got sold across the seas, across the oceans. We don't know where they are. Why? Because we rejected God's commandments. He says, listen, I'm going to reject you. Not only that, but I'm going to reject your children also. The Messiah is not playing, man. This is serious business. He's not playing games. Give me Isaiah 51 verse 20. The Lord is not playing. We need to stand up. Of Isaiah chapter 51 verse 20. Read. Thy sons have fainted. You see that? Thy sons have fainted. We sons. Give me that in Hosea 4 and 1. He says, Thy sons have fainted. Hosea 4 verse 2. Thy sons have fainted. The sons of God have fainted. They are unconscious. They don't know who they are. They have no sense. Because when you're conscious, it means you've got what? You've got sense. When you're unconscious, it means you have no sense. That's why you do all the evil that you do. Because nothing is telling you that you must stop. Read it. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 2. You know what? Start of verse 1. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 1. Read. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel. Go ahead. For the Lord had a controversy with the inhabitants. No, 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 no. Not Hosea. Lamentations. Lamentations 4, verse 1. Watch this. This is the letter of Jeremiah. Okay. He's lamenting over Israel. Read it. The book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 1. Watch this. You know what? Hmm. Give me Lamentations 1, verse 4. Watch this. The book of verse 1. Read verse 1. We're going to jump to verse 4. The book of Lamentations, chapter 1, verse 1. Go ahead. How does the city sit solitary? The city that is sitting solitary is the is the sea, is Zion. Read. That was full of people. That was full of people. The greatest nation that ever walked the earth. Read. How is she become a widow? We have become a widow. That's what we just read in Baruch 4. We become a widow. Go ahead. She that was great among the nations. We were great among the nations. We are the mightiest nation on earth. Great among the nations, ruling over them with a the rod of iron. Read. And princes among the provinces. We were princes among the provinces. Go ahead. How is she become tributary? How we become tributary now? How we become slaves? How we become slaves to pay tax and colonial tax? We pay our people, the people that colonized us, we pay them for colonizing us. You cannot make this up. You understand? Jump down to verse 4. Read. Verse 4. The ways of Zion to mourn. You see that? The subject matter is Zion. That's the city in verse 1. The way of Zion to mourn. Come on. Because none come to the solemn feast. Nobody come to the solemn feast. That's why people are celebrating Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays, New Year's, you understand? And, and all these other demonic days. Go ahead. All her gates are desolate. The gates are desolate, meaning the leaders, there is no leaders, the Lord is saying. That's why today our people, they, that's why our people, they are expecting the government to come and help them with this problem. The government is not going to help you with this problem of merciless killings of our sons and daughters. Read. Her priests sigh. They sigh because why? They, right now, the priests are supposed to be doing the work. What are they doing? They are collecting money in the Christian church, worshiping white Jesus. Read. Her virgins are afflicted. Their virgins are afflicted because now the sisters, they are not, they are left unprotected. Why? Because there's no fathers in the houses. What are they doing? Getting drunk, smoking weed, sleeping around, popping babies, being a rolling stone. Read on. And she is in bitterness. We are, the now as a people, we are in bitterness right now. Read. Her adversaries are the chief. The, our adversaries, they are ruling over us. They are the ones that are deciding on how the fate of our life must go. Go ahead. Her enemies prosper. They are our enemies, they are prospering. Who are the enemies? All the other nations outside of us. The Chinese, the Japanese, the Arabs, the East Indians. You understand? The Hamites. They are prospering. Go ahead. For the Lord had afflicted her. For the Lord had afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. The Lord has afflicted us because of the multitude of our sins. Go ahead. Her children are gone into captivity before the enemy. You see that? We have gone into captivity now. We are in the midst of our enemies and they are terrorizing us. And how our enemies, our enemies are terrorizing us directly and indirectly. How are they terrorizing us indirectly? They put guns in the hands of black men who hate themselves and who hate their own people to come into the community and terrorize us. That's how our enemies are terrorizing us indirectly. You understand? And they are banking on knowing that 
their families are broken. They know that with broken families, the mothers are raising children by themselves, the fathers are not there. They know good shot because these children are going to be raised up as what the young men, boys are going to be raised up to be emotional and be gangsters. So we put a gun in his head, what you going to have? You're going to, that's the product you have right now. That's what you're seeing in the communities right now. That's the evil you're seeing right now. Now go back. Give me that in Hosea 4 now. Lamentations 4. Read this one now. Now we understand. The subject matter is Zion. The book of Lamentations chapter 4 verse 1. Read. How is the gold become dim? How is the gold become dim? Give me that in uh, uh, Isaiah 13 verse 12. How is the gold become dim? Because we are the gold, man. But the Lord says, the gold, the precious gold of fear, we have now become gold. Watch this. Read it. The book of Isaiah chapter 13 verse 12. Read. I will make a man more precious than, gold, than fine gold. The Lord says he's going to make the sons of Zion, the sons of God, more precious than fine gold. Even the best gold of fear will not come close to us. Go ahead. Even a man, then the golden way. Then the golden wedge of Ophir is what we're going to listen. We are the gold. That's what you need to understand. We are the gold. But the gold, the precious sons of Zion, which is the gold, will now become dim. Go back. Because what makes us dim is the impurities inside of us. The sin, the iniquities, the transgressions that we bring against the Lord our God. Read. Lamentations 4 verse 1. The book of Lamentations chapter 4 verse 1. Read. How is the gold become dim? How is the sun, the precious sons of Zion, become dim? Go ahead. How is the most fine gold changed? Hmm. How that has it changed? The most fine gold, that's the sons of God. He says we've been changed to a low estate now. Go ahead. The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. You see, we are the stones of the sanctuary. The Lord says we've been poured out in the street corners. We are walking, the nations are walking on top of us now. We've become the street where the nations wipe their feet. Read. The precious sons of Zion. That's it right there. That's why it says, Thy sons have fainted. Which sons? The precious sons of Zion. They have fainted. They have no sense no more. Read. Comparable to fine gold. Because we are comparable to fine gold. Go ahead. How are they esteemed as either earth and pitch? Now we become clay. We become like nothing. We become wood and earth now. Instead of those precious stones. The gold and the diamonds and the platinum and the brass. Now we become wood and earth. We become like nothing. Read. The work of the hands of the potter. You see that the work of the hand of the potter is the most high God. He fashioned us to be more precious than fine gold. But what have we become? We've become worse than earth and pitches now. we become like nothing. we become like the scum of the earth. That's what we become, the Lord is saying. The Lord is mad. That's why he's putting the spirit on the prophets to speak like this. Go back. Isaiah 5 verse 51 verse 20. The book of Isaiah chapter 51 verse 20. Read. Thy sons have fainted. The precious sons of Zion have fainted. Read. They lie at the head of all the streets. They are now in the steep corners. What are they doing? Killing. Merciless killings. You understand? Lying. Killing. And hating one another. You understand? It says they break out and blood touches blood. That's what's happening right now. Read. As a wild bull in a net. In yeah, a net. A wild bull in a net. You ever seen a bull? It's not just a normal bull. It's a wild bull. Show that bull that they jump on in Brazil. Show that thing. Show the wild bull. I'm going to show you in the spirit. This is how the sons of God are today. Because we're not keeping God's laws. This is what the Lord says about what's going on with the men. The men of Israel. Okay. Read that verse again. This one. The book of Isaiah chapter 51 verse 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. They lie at the steep corners. At the steep corners, who's supposed to be at the steep corners? Hold that. Give me that in Luke 14, 23. No, the video. We want the video. Show the video of these wild bulls that they be riding. You can go to YouTube. It's there. Come on, read that. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 23. I just want a small clip. Read it. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedge. Go ahead. And compel them to come in. And compel them to come in. The highways and hedges, that's the steep corners. Go ahead. That my house may be filled. That my house may be filled. With the, with the what? With the, 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 with
profitable sons of Zion that we're going to find in this deed. For when we bring them in, they become profitable to the gospel. Okay? Now, go back to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 20. The book of Isaiah chapter 51 verse 20. Watch this. Thy sons have fainted. The precious sons of Zion, God says they have fainted. Okay, come on. They lie at the head of all the streets. They lie at the head of all the streets. They are in the steep corners. As a what? As a wild bull in a net. As a wild bull in a cage. Now show that wild bull. I want to see that wild bull. Meaning it lo it lo it's losing its mind. No, it's not wild. I want to see the one that is terrorizing somebody in that way. That's the one I want to see. I want to see the one that is terrorizing the someone in the net because they are playing with these wild beasts. Now read that Bible again. When you find it, let us know. Okay? Isaiah 51 verse 20. Read that again. The book of Isaiah chapter 51 verse 20. Read. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. They are in the steep corners. The precious sons of Zion, they have fainted from the laws of God. They are unconscious to who they are and what their job is. Go ahead. As a wild bull in a net. As a what? As a wild bull in a net. As a wild bull in the net. Yep. I want to see the one that is the, the, the bull that is wild. That's the one I want to see. I want to see that thing. So you can see this verse coming to life. Heartbreak and certainly some sore muscles for Michael Lane as he gets launched and popped at the same time. Go back, go back, so we can see him being launched. Gonna show him the front of the chute. Give him a real close look at that, and then a. Big look to the right, back around to the left, and that's the thing with this bull. They yeah. can't really draw. You see that that's the wild bull. Go back. Right, back around to the left, and that's the thing with this bull. They can't really draw a beat on him because I've seen him be a 45 pointer and look never even that. turn you back. See? You know, he can go Kick straight look and still be really ranker, but when he finds a direction. He's just awesome. That's the wild bull. Now let's let's see. Oh no, he definitely plans on riding him. Oh, they're gonna take a look, but hey. man, oh man! No play. Everyone here and hopefully watching at home wants eight to happen. Ryan Dernier may have just done. What That's everyone what? else has found impossible. That was good. I, I hope he makes it, man. <laughs> that, to come that close on this bull, it, nobody likes this bull from That's a That's a wild bull. You see how wild he is? You know, he's not, he's not like that thing is wild, those man. Top level the most that bull says, That's how the black man is. He's great at getting his job done and putting guys Pass on forward. the ground. I hope Dirt Eater gets this. And you telegraphed it, too. It's just the Unleash the beast level possibility. Hung up a little bit. He finally breaks free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
hung up a little bit. He finally breaks free. And Mac, just another example of why plus these four, bucking plus four. battle. This is a boy we talk about always being to the right. He goes to the right, but Joe's right. Okay, that's that. it on there. That's it on there. Now read that verse again. Go back to the beginning of it. So that when this verse plays, so we can see it. The one at the beginning. All the way back to the beginning. All the way. Yeah, pause right here. Now play. Action. Yeah, pause. Okay, go back a little bit, just a bit. Okay, now read that verse. Isaiah 51 verse 20. The book of Isaiah, chapter 51 verse 20. Read. Thy sons have fainted. Thy sons have fainted. Come on. They lie at the head of all the streets. They lie at the head of all the streets. Meaning in the street corners doing evil, the Lord is saying. Come on. As a wild bull in a net. Now play. Well, the while we're reading that part when it's as a wild bull in a net, I want them to see that wild bull. That's how these young black men are. That's how these gangsters are. That's how these monsters are. Okay, come on. As a what? As a wild bull in a net. As a what? As a wild bull in a net. As a what? As a wild bull in a net. That's a wild bull in a net. You see what he's doing? That most of God says that's how black men are. Those that are what? Those that hate their own people. Those that terrorize the community. They are like that bull that you see right there. Okay, that's it on there. You can take that off the screen. Read that verse again, verse 20. The book of Isaiah chapter 51, verse 20. Read. Thy sons have fainted. Come on. They lie at the head of all the streets. They lie at the steep corners. Come on. As a wild bull in a net. As a wild bull in a net. Read. They are full of the fury of the Lord. They are full of the fury of the Lord. To get the definition of fury. Get the definition of fury. He says they are full of the fury of the Lord. The fury of the Lord is the wrath of the Most High God. He says they are full of the fury of the Lord. Get the definition of fury. Let's get the definition of fury. It says they are full of the fury of the Lord. Yep. Let's see it. Put it on the screen so that people can see this thing. Read that verse again. Definition? No, no. The verse. Verse 20. The book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 20. Read. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. As a wild bull in a net, they are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of their God. He says they are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of their God. Now read the definition of fury. Definition of fury. Wild or violent anger. You see that? So the most High God says these young men that in the street corners, they are full of wild and violent anger of the most High God. Because the Lord is angry. Why? Because black men, they, the older men, don't stand up to set the right example for these young men. So the most high God is judging the older men using the young men. That's what the Lord is doing, man. Give me Isaiah 3 and 1. We coming back here. Keep that thing on the screen. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 1. Read. For behold, the Lord of hosts, so take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stain and the staff. The Lord says, He said, I'm taking the stain and the staff. What is the staff used for? For support. Hold that. Give me that in Hebrews. Okay. Hebrews 11. He says, He took the stain and the staff. Hebrews chapter 11. Read verse, verse 21. Watch this. Hebrews 11. Watch this thing. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 21. Come on. By faith, Jacob, when he was a dying. When our forefather Jacob was dying. Come on. Blessed both the sons of Joseph. He blessed the sons of Joseph when you read in Genesis. Go ahead. And worship leaning upon the top of his staff. He was doing what? And worship leaning upon the top of his staff. He says he was worshiping leaning upon the top of his staff because he was in his old age so he was using the staff as a support when he's walking like you see our grandfathers when they are old when they are aged they walk with the staff for support now go back Isaiah 3 verse 1 the book of Isaiah chapter 3 verse 1 Read. for behold the Lord 
the Lord of hosts, don't take away from Jerusalem and from Judah. The stay and the staff. The stay and the staff. Who's the staff? The men. The men. The men are the pillars. They are the pillars that are supposed to what? Support the nation. We're supposed to hold the nation up because we're the foundation, man. Go ahead. The whole stay of bread. The Lord says, I'm going to take away the whole stay of bread because who puts the bread on the table? The men. Read. And the whole stay of water. And the whole stay of water. These are the basic necessities of life. Who's supposed to bring these things? The men. Read. The mighty men. You and see that? The mighty men. They are the what? They are the stay. They are the staff. The Lord says, the mighty men, the Lord says, I'm going to take these away. Go ahead. And the men of war. And the men of war. Because who's supposed to protect the people? The men. So now if the men are in the street corners, who's supposed to protect the women and the children? Nobody's there to protect them. Read. The judge and the prophet. The judge and the prophet. The judges, they are there to judge the matters using the laws of God. The prophets are supposed to be there to prophesy to the people what's to come. What not to do, what to do, that says the Lord. Read. And the prudent and the ancient. The prudent is the wise man, the extremely wise man. The ancient is the older man, the aged man. That's supposed to show the young man the way. Read. The captain of 50. The captains of 50 which are supposed to lead men to war. Read. And the honorable man. The honorable man. Come on. And the counselor. The counselors are supposed to counsel the people in just judgment. Read. And the cunning artificer. The artificer. Those that are supposed to what? Build weapons. Go ahead. And the eloquent orator. The eloquent orator meaning those that know how to speak well. Go ahead. And I will... Give children to be their princes. You see what the Lord says he's going to do? Once he take away all those, they stay in the staff. He says, I'm going to give these monsters to be your what? And I will give children to be their princes. Because these children that are what? The same children that we read about in Isaiah 3 verse 12. It says, children are their oppressors. The Lord says, I'm going to take these children that are oppressing you. They are going to be your leaders now. How are they leading the people? They are terrorizing the community. Read. And babes shall rule over them. And when babes are ruling, that's why you've got chaos and disorder in the nation. Because babes are ruling. Babes, they use guns. They are emotional. They don't know how to resolve conflict. Because they are childish. Read. And the people shall be oppressed. And the, when babes are ruling, people will be oppressed. That's why you see there's so much oppression in the community. Who's oppressing the young, who's oppressing the older men and the older women? The young black men. With guns, with knives. Raping, stealing, robbing, killing, murdering, raping, all of these evil things. Read. And the people shall be oppressed, everyone by another. Everyone by another. Go ahead. And everyone by his neighbor. And everyone by his neighbor. You see that? Go ahead. The children. The, the child shall what? The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. Meaning the young man will disrespect the older ones. The young man will disrespect Abu Mkul. Abu Koko, they will disrespect the older ones. That's what God is saying. Because when babes are ruling, these babes have been raised by their mothers to be emotional, to be more magnificent to rule against delicious. That's them. Read. And the base against the honorable. And the base will post themselves against the honorable men in the community. They will disrespect them. They will look at the old men. They will look at the people like Bumkul and say, Eita, Ekse. That's what they're going to do. That's what they're doing right now. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now go back. Isaiah 51 verse 20. The book of Isaiah chapter 51 verse 20. Read. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. Mm. As a wild bull in a net. As a wild bull in a net. Come on. They are full of the fury of the Lord. They are full of the fury of the Lord. The rebuke of thy God. The rebuke of thy God. Now read the definition again. The definition of fury. Definition of fury. Wild or violent anger. Wild or violent anger. That's what the Lord says. These young black men, they are filled with wild and violent anger. That's why it says they are as a wild bull in a net. Now read the next definition. Definition two. Read. Extreme strength of violence in an action. You see that? Extreme strength of violence in an action. Go ahead. Or oh, a natural phenomenon. That's the Negro. Or oh, a natural phenomenon. That's the Negro. You understand? That's the Negro. You get the definition of phenomenon. That's the Negro. 
the Bantu Negro here in Mzanzi for sure. Read the definition of phenomenon. Man. Yep, that's it right there. Read it. Definition of phenomenon. A fact or situation that is observed to exist to exist or happen. So it is observed to exist. Read. Especially one whose cause or explanation is in question. You see that thing? The Negro cause or explanation is in question. Because of the way that the black man behaves. They are full of the fury of the Lord. The rebuke of thy God. Now get the definition of rebuke. Actually, you know what? Go to the second definition. Read the synonyms. Read the first synonym. Definition. Si similar. Mm. Marvel. What? Marvel. What? Marvel. Give me, give me Mark 6 and 1. You see, I'm going to show you. If the Son of God is to see all this, what's going on down here, he will marvel. As he marveled back then, he will marvel today. Because the Bantu Negro is a phenomenon. Now read that. The Mark book, 6 and 1. The book of Mark, chapter 6, verse 1. Watch this. And he went out from thence and came into his own country. That's Christ now going around teaching. Come on. And his disciples followed him. Read. And when the Sabbath day was come. On the Sabbath day, what happened? He began to teach in the synagogue. He began to teach in the synagogues whether the Jews always resolve. All, whether the Jews always resolve. Go ahead. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence had this from whence had this man these things? He says, Where does this man get these things from? Go ahead. And what wisdom is this which is given unto what, him? What wisdom is this that is given unto him? Go ahead. That even such mighty works are wrought by his hand. You, you see that he says mighty works are wrought by his hand. Go ahead. Is not this the carpenter's son? Read. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? You see, is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? You see that thing? Read. The brother of James mm. and Joseph. Read. And of Judah and Simon. And are not his sisters here with us? Read. And they were offended at him. They were offended at the Son of God. Go ahead. But Jesus said unto them, mm. A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country. He says a prophet is not without honor, meaning a prophet has honor, except in his own country where he grew up, in his own house where they saw him, where they think they know him. Read. And among his own kin. And among his own family members. Read. And in his own house. And in his own house. Read. And he could there do no mighty works. He says he could not do any mighty works because why? They say, no, we know you. You grew up before us. We see you every day. So they don't think he's a mighty prophet of the Most High. Read. Same thing. He laid his hands upon a few sick folk. Read. And healed them. Go ahead. And he marveled. He what? He marveled. He did what now? He marveled. And he marveled. You see, you know what, what, what would have to take to make the son of God to marvel, the Bantu Negro. The Bantu Negro. The, listen, man, listen. He, he created the heavens. He created the angels, man, at the command of the Most High God. But then he saw the Bantu Negro. And then he, was, he saw a phenomenon. Read. And he marveled because of their unbelief. He marveled because of their unbelief. Go ahead. And he went round about the villages teaching. You see that he went around about the villages and teaching. Go ahead. And he called unto him the twelve mm. and began to send them forth by two and two. Read. And gave them power over unclean spirits. And he gave them power over unclean spirits. Let's understand. The Lord gave us the same thing. The power over unclean spirits is this Bible right here. The most that God has given us power over unclean spirit. That's why we fast often. We keep the commandments. We study. We teach. Why? Because the Lord has given us power over unclean spirit. So called these gangs, what gangster leashes that you see on the streets? What magnificent that you see on the streets? Guess what? Those are unclean spirits that are about. Guess what? The Bible is going to cleanse. We're going to use the word of God to cleanse them out. So that you are no longer gangster leashes. You are the prophet of the most high God. A gun down, Bible up, boots on the ground. Understand that? That's what the Lord is saying He's going to do. And the Lord is doing it, okay, in these last days. 
Now go back to Isaiah 51 verse 20. One more again. The book of Isaiah chapter 51 verse 20. Read. Thy sons have fainted. Okay, you can take that off this thing. Okay, Isaiah 51 verse 20. The book of Isaiah chapter 51 verse 20. Read. Thy sons have fainted. Thy sons have fainted. Come on. They lie at the head of all the streets. They lie at the head of all the streets. They are in the steep corners doing evil. Read. As a wild bull in a net. They are wild. They are wild. Read. They are out of control. Go ahead. They are full of the fury of the Lord. They are full of the fury of the Lord. Go ahead. The rebuke of thy God. The rebuke of thy God. The rebuke of thy God. Now get the definition of rebuke. The definition of rebuke. Just put type it there. Remove the phenomenon part and just put rebuke. There. Okay, come on. Yeah, put it on the screen so that people can see it. Okay, so raise it up so, so that you can see second lady. Okay, read it. Definition of rebuke. Go ahead. Express sharp disapproval or criticism of someone because of their behavior or action. You see what the Lord is saying? He says express sharp disapproval or criticism of someone because of their behavior or action. That's the Bible. What we just read, this definition right here, that's the Bible. The, that's what the Bible does. The Bible expresses sharp disapproval or criticism of the 12 tribes of Israel because of our behavior and actions. That's why when we teach that the people get offended, why? Because they know they are in the wrong. And they don't want to take responsibility for their wrongdoing. That's why they don't want the Bible to be led. That's why the pastors are afraid to go out and correct the people and show the people the right way. They are afraid of that thing. We are not. We're going to go out and teach the people God's laws. Understand that thing. Go back to Isaiah 51. Read verse 21 now. Go back to Isaiah chapter 51 verse 21. Read. Right. Therefore, hear now this. Thou afflicted. Thou afflicted. We are afflicted right now as a people. Come on. And drunken. And drunken. But not with wine. We are afflicted. We drunken. But not with wine. What are we drunk with? We drunk with the philosophies that we've been taught here. The reason why you see black men hating each other this way, especially in these last days, is because of white Jesus. I'm going to say what I'm saying again. The reason why you see black men hate each other, they kill one another mercilessly like so, is because of white Jesus. Put the criminal on the screen. Put the criminal on the screen and give me first Timothy 2 verse 20. No, 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Read verse. That was 24. Put the criminal on the screen. What I want to show you is that this, this picture that you see on the screen is the reason why black men hate one another. Because this image teaches us to hate each other. Because we think white is right and black is evil. And that's what's been pushed in the, in, the, in the churches through Christianity. That demonic abominable religion. They are pushing this thing right here. For black men to hate one another. Give me that in Hosea 3 and 4. I'm going to show you that. Hosea chapter 3 verse 4. This white image of Jesus is the reason why black men, black women hate one another. Because why? They teach us to hate ourselves. They teach us to hate our skin. They teach us to hate our hair. They teach us to hate our noses and our lips. That's why when you look at your brother that look like you, 
you think your brother or sister is ugly because why? This demonic image that you see on the skin, this pain face, you understand? Unclean hair and unclean demonic skin is because you, see, you think that's good. That's why you see our people, they bleach our skin because of this. They relax their hair because of this. They blonde their hair because of this thing. They put contact in their eyes, in their eyes because of this thing. Now, give me Hosea 3 verse 4. The book of Hosea chapter 3 verse 4. Read. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. We will abide many days without a king. And without a prince. Without a prince. Go and, ahead. And without a sacrifice. Go ahead. And without an image. Without an what? Without an image. And so the heathens know. The white man knows that when you took this image, when you took our images out of the Bible, they gave us this demonic image that you see on the screen right here. Revelation 13, 15. Hold that. We're coming back. This image that you see on the screen right here, I'm going to show you what the Bible calls it. This is not Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ does not have a pale face. He does not have unclean dog hair. Now read the Bible. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 15. Read. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. You see that thing? The white man had power to give life unto the image of the beast. The image of the beast is what you see on the screen. This white image of Jesus. That's the image of the beast. This is the reason why black men hate one another. Because of this image right here. Because Christianity teaches self-hate and it promotes white supremacy. Read it again. The book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 15. Read. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That's the image of the beast right here. Go ahead. That the image of the beast should both speak. And how does this image speak? They use the movies. That's why on December 25th, they show that Jesus was born on December 25th. Jesus Christ was not born on December 25th, nor was he a white man. On Good Friday, they say it's a Good Friday. There's nothing good about that Friday. You understand? They say, no, that's when Christ was crucified. Christ was not crucified on Good Friday. Christ was crucified on the night of the Passover. You understand? Read. That the image of the beast should both speak mm. and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast. The people, the many of us that did not worship or bow down to this image, what did they do to us? Should be killed. They killed us. So when the missionaries came over here in the 1800s, what did they do? In the 1400s, what did the Portuguese do? Who Vasco da Gama? Who Bartholomew Diaz? What did they do? Who Jan van Riebeck? They fear they fear us this image. They shoved it down our throat. So now later on, Black men hate each other. You go to church every Sunday to learn how to hate your brother. Every Sunday you go to church to learn how to hate your brother and how to love your oppressor. That's what they teach you every Sunday because they push white supremacy. They show you these white images because you believe white is right, black is evil. That's what they do. That's what Christianity does. That's abominable religion. Now, give me that in uh, John 19. John 19 verse 13. John 19, I was just going over this thing, okay? John chapter 19, verse 18. Put the clip, keep that criminal on this thing. Because our people, they will, they will die for this image right here. John chapter 19, read verse 18. Watch this. The book of John chapter 19, verse 13. Watch this thing right here. Read, start verse 12. Verse 12. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But you know what? Start at verse 10. The book of John, chapter 19, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Then said Pilate unto him. So Pilate was a Roman, was a white man, was an E-Roman. Start verse 9. The book of John, chapter 19, verse 9. Read. And went again into the judgment hall, and said unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Christ didn't answer him nothing. Go ahead. Then said Pilate unto him. Take, that, take the criminal off the screen for now. You know, people start bowing down and catching the unholy demon. Now read that. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? Read. Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me. He says, You have no power at all against me. Watch this. Read. Except it were given thee from above. Because the most high God is the one that made you ruler over us. Because Christ was in slavery. Just like the rest of us we are right now. Go ahead. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee had the greater sin. Because who delivered Christ unto Pilate? The Jews. Read. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. 
But the Jews cried out. But our people cried out. Our people cried out against Pilate. Go ahead. Saying, if thou let this man go, if you let Christ go, what's going to happen? Thou art not Caesar's friend. You are not Caesar's friend. Now put the criminal back on the screen. If you let Christ go, you are not Caesar's friend. Put the criminal back on the screen. Now read that verse again. The book of John, chapter 19, verse 12. Read. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. So what you are seeing on the screen, that's Caesar right there. That is Caesar, but yes. The second son of Pope Alexander the Sixth of Rome, whom Leonardo da Vinci painted as the new image of Christ, the Antichrist. What you see on the screen, that's the Antichrist. Read. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Watch this, go ahead. When Pilate therefore heard this, heard that, when Pilate therefore heard that they, heard that saying, heard that saying, read, he brought Jesus forth and sat down into the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement. Read. But in the Hebrew, Kabata. Kabata, go ahead. Kabata. And it was, it was the preparation of the Passover. And about the sixth hour, and he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. He says, Behold your king. Now put the real king on the screen. Put the real king of the Jews on the screen. Not this demon that you see here. That demon that you, hold on. The demon you see on the screen is the reason why black men are killing one another mercilessly. No, no, no. Come on. Why are you putting on the screen? They're going to think this is what I'm talking about. Put the criminal back on the screen. The image you see on the screen is the reason why black men kill one another. That's the image you see on the screen. Now put the real king of the Jews on the screen now. Blow it up so the people can see. That's it right there. That's the Messiah. That's the biblical description of the Messiah. That's what you see on the screen right there. Look at him, man. That's the son of God. You understand? This is our king right here. Now read that verse again. The book of John, chapter 19, verse 14. Read. And it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour. And he said unto the Jews. Now this is what Pilate said. Read. Behold, your king. This is our king right here. This is the king of the Jews. You understand? <laughs> now what you see on this kid, that's the king of the Jews. Now give me that book where you see Christ in the middle teaching the apostles. It's a white book. Yep, that's the one. Put the I want you to put the cover of the book on the screen. Now give me the book so they, they we have the book. Come on, Atlas of the Christian Church. Give me the book. It's a white book. Atlas of the Christian Church. Where is it? Is that the one? Right. This is the book right here. You see this? This is the book.
read the title of the book on the screen atlas of the christian church hold on the people don't see it yet yep yeah read that blow it up some yeah read the title of the book atlas of the christian church atlas of the christian church who's the who's the author edited by henry chadwick and g r even okay now go inside the book now we're going to read the writing first then we're going to show the picture because christ is a black man the real king of the jews is a black man This is page 15. Now read the read the read the highlighted part in green. Yeah, read. Bottom right. Christ teaching the apostles. Christ doing what? Christ teaching the apostles. Christ teaching the apostles. Okay, what year was this? A fourth century fresco. 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 A fourth century fresco. Now go to the page to the picture now, where Christ is teaching the apostles. It's also gonna let you know what the apostles look like. Yep, that's it right there. That's it. You see Christ in the middle? That's Christ right there teaching the apostles. What color is it? A black man with a fro. Look at him, man. That's him. That's our king. That's the real king of kings. The lion of the tribe of Judah. That's him right there. You understand? Now, go back to John. John chapter 19. Read verse, that verse again. Keep the Messiah on the screen. John 19 verse 14. The book of John chapter 19 verse 14. Wait. And it was the preparation of the Passover. And about the no, no, it was the preparation of Good Friday. It was the preparation of the Passover. You see that thing? It was not good. Christ did not die on, on, the, on Good Friday. He died on the Passover. You don't say Good Friday here. Because why Jesus came with Good Friday? Read that verse again, verse 14. The book of John, chapter 19, verse 14. Wait. And it was the preparation of the Passover. And about the sixth hour. And he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. That's our king right there. That right there is our king with the apostles. You understand? That's our king. Keep it. But they cried out, Away with him. What did, what did the Jew, what did the black people say? Away with him. Away with him. Away with him. Read that verse again. Verse 15. Verse 15. But they cried out, Away with him. Away with him. This is what black people say. Away with him. Away with the black Messiah. Away with the biblical Messiah. Away with him. Go ahead. Crucify him. They said crucify him. Okay. Watch this. Now ready the criminal. Put the criminal. Ready the criminal. I'm going to show you something man. They said away with the real Messiah of the Bible. What did they want? Do you have the criminal on, 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 on standby? Okay. Now read the verse again. Verse 15. The book of John chapter 19 verse 15. Read. But they cried out, away with him. Read. Away with him. Crucify him. They say, crucify the real Messiah. Go ahead. Pilate said unto him, uh -huh. unto them. Read. Shall I crucify your king? You see, even Pilate knew who our king is. He knew who our king is and he knew what he looked like. He's a black man. But listen to what black people say. The chief priest answered. The chief priest answered. What did they say? We have no king. They say we have no king, but who now? The criminal put him. But Caesar. They say we have no king, but who? But Caesar. They say this is their king. They say we have no king, but Caesar Borges. That's what they said. They rejected the Son of God and say we have no king, but the white man. That's what they say. That's why they are pushing this throughout the earth because what? They want black people to hate each other. That's why you see black men killing one another mercilessly in the community, terrorizing the community in Kami. Hmm? Magnificent gangster leashes. Hmm? That's them, Muslim. Put gangster leashes on the screen.
Gangsta, gangsta. G A N T. Gang. 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 Now I'm going to show you what Gangsta Alicia's, look at Gangsta Alicia's hairs on his neck. I want you to pay close attention, man. I want you to see, no, 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 that one, he's wearing a cap. That one. I want you to see what Gangsta Alicia's hairs on his neck. Which is the reason why a lot of these gangsters, they are the ones that go to church. They are the ones that their grandmothers drag them to the church to worship white Jesus. You see, that's gangster delicious. You see what he has on his neck? What color is he wearing? Pink. He's wearing pink. Look at him. You see that? Because he's been raised by his mother. He's choosing pink. He's effeminate. This is a homo dad. You see that thing? He's wearing pink. What is he wearing on his neck? Give me a Latin Nabakuk. You know what I want? Nabakuk too. Gangster delicious. Look what he's wearing on his neck. You know what I want, right? A bag of two. Because these who can sell it, they be the, the same ones that go to church every Sunday. And during the week, they terrorize the community with guns. Now read that. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 18. Watch this. What profited the graven image? The graven image is what you see on Gangsta Alicia's neck. Read. That the maker thereof had graven it. The maker is the white man that graven this thing for us to worship. Read. The molten image. That thing on his neck is a molten image. Read. And a teacher of lies. Is a teacher of lies to teach our people to what? To hate one another and to kill each other. Read. That the maker of his work trusted therein. Because they trusted and they make our people to trust upon this thing. Not in the God of heaven and earth. Read. To make dumb idols. Because that's a dumb idol. To make our people, the black men with guns, to be dumb also. Read. Oh, unto him that said to the wood. They say to the wood, the Christian cross that you see on his neck. Awake. Awake. To the dumb stone. Because the dumb stone goes back to what? The cover stone in Mecca. Go ahead. Arise. They say, wake up. Read. It shall teach. It's going to teach them lies. Read. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver. You see, it's silver. Look at it. You see the silver? Go ahead. And there is no breath at all in the midst of it. There is no breath in it. That's why it says, thy sons have fainted. They are fainted because they are wearing things that do what? That make their minds to be faint. That's why. Now look up magnificent. Google Magnificent. Because these are the same young black men that are terrorizing the community. They go to church every Sunday. You understand? They are danger to society until the Bible hits them in the face. They are danger to society and to themselves. Because with Magnificent, hold on. You know what? Put Caesar and, 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 and Gangster Alicia side by side. I want Gangsta Licious and Caesar Bourget side by side. I want to show you something. Put them side by side. I'm going to show you like the picture we had, the, the picture that we're showing now. You can download it. But I want to show you something that it's all the same thing, man. Christianity and gangsterism is the same, it, it's two sides of the same demonic coin. Because Christianity terrorizes our people spiritually. Gangsters are terrorizing our people physically with guns. It's the same thing. You understand? Give me that in Deuteronomy 7. Verse 25. From Deuteronomy. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 25. Read. 
The graven images of their gods. The graven images of their gods. The graven images of the gods of these other nations. They are idols. Read. Shall he burn with fire? You see the cross, the Christian cross. The Lord says, set that thing on fire. The copper stone, set that thing on fire, the Lord is saying. Read. Thou shalt not desire the silver. Thou shalt not desire the silver of the agreement images. Or gold that is on them. Or gold that is on them. Go ahead. Nor take it unto thee. Meaning don't wear it. Don't put it on your neck. Go ahead. Lest thou be snared therein. Lest thou be snared therein. Because you are going to be snared. You are going to be trapped. Spiritually, you are going to be trapped by this thing. Go ahead. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Because that thing on your neck is an abomination unto the Lord your God. The cross on your neck, that's an abomination. That's a symbol that they use to kill and crucify our Lord and Savior. It's a symbol of oppression. Read. Neither shall thou bring an abomination into thine house. Don't bring that abomination into your house. That Christian cross, the Lord says, don't bring it into your house also. Read. Lest thou be a cursed thing like it. Lest, lest, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. Because that thing is cursed, you're going to be cursed by that thing. That's what the Most High God is saying. Is that it on that? Yeah. Read. But thou shalt utterly destroy it. The Lord shall you shall what? But thou shalt utterly destroy it. Detest. Read but, that again. But thou shalt utterly detest it. The Lord said you shall utterly detest it. You shall utterly hate that thing. Go ahead. And thou shalt utterly abhor it. You shall utterly hate it with all your guts. Read. For it is a cursed thing. Because it is a cursed thing. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? So go back. John chapter 19. Okay, is it going to take a while to do this? No, I know we're not gonna have time for that. Um, just um, go back and put the criminal on the screen. I'm gonna show you what I was talking about. Put the criminal back on the screen. Put the criminal on the screen. Now read John 19 verse 15 again. The book of John chapter 19 verse 15. Read. But they cried out, "Away with him! Mm. Away with him! Crucify him!" Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? Shall I crucify your king? Read. The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. He says, We have no king but Caesar Borges. Now, zoom in, zoom in Caesar Borges. Look at his chest. What's sitting in his chest? Look at that thing. They crave an image on his neck. Now bring back Gangster Licious. Bring back Gangster Licious. I'm going to show you something. That Gangster Licious and Caesar Borges, they are all moving in the same spirit. So is the Incaves, so is the monsters in our communities terrorizing our people with guns. Show Gangster Licious on the screen. Put him up. Look at what Gangster Licious is wearing on his neck. He's wearing the same thing that Caesar Borges is wearing. And this is what our people say they want. Meaning to hell with the King of Kings. We want this. They say we want magnificent. We want gangster licious. That's what they're telling you. AKA Caesar Borges. That's what they're telling you they want. They are telling you that's what they want. That's what they're telling you. That's what they're saying they want. Now go back to Isaiah. Because that's where we went. Yeah. Isaiah 51. Read verse 21 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 20. Verse 21. Yeah, 20 and 21. Thy sons have fainted. Thy sons have fainted. Come on. They lie at the head of all the streets. They are in the street corners terrorizing the, the people. Come on. As a wild bull in a net. As a wild bull in a net. Go ahead. They are full of the fury of the Lord. They are full of the fury of the Lord. The rebuke of thy God. The rebuke of thy God. Go ahead. Therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken. He says, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken. Come on. But not with wine. But they are not drunken with wine. What are they drunk with? They are drunk with the philosophies of the white man. Christianity, politics, democracy. They are drunken with. You see that? Look at them side by side. Same was a group. You see that? There is no difference between Gangsta Licious and Caesar Borges. 
letting you know there is no difference between Christianity and gangsterism. It's all the same thing. That's what the Lord is trying to show you, man. The Lord is trying to show you that's why black men and black women, that's why they hate one another. Why? Because of what? Because of Christianity and Caesar Borges and white Jesus. They are all moving in the same spirit. The same spirit. Give me that in uh, Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10. It was Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10. Take it up. You can take that off this thing. Read. My son, if sinners entice thee. If sinners entice thee. Who are the sinners? The gangsters. Peer pressure. Young black men out of order. That are what? That are wild as bulls in a net. Read. Consent thou not. Is a don't consent. Don't follow them. It's the job of the parents to teach their sons and daughters not to join gangs. Read. The, you know what the gang is? Christianity is a gang. Get that in Zerah 12 and 1. I'm going to prove that. Christianity is a gang. They are infecting the young men with the rebuke of their God. Read it. The prophet Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1. Read. When thou wilt do good. No, no. 19. I think it's 19 what I want. No, 16, I'm sorry, 16 and 1. Yeah, read it. The prophet Ecclesiastes chapter 16, verse 1. Read. Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children. Because there was something that I saw. Um, there's a video that has been uh, rolling on YouTube. I've just been wanting to watch it, but I just never did. When it says, these pastors, uh, if they die, they will go to hell. I think there's a picture of it. Just look that up. I don't know what they were doing on the stage. They were doing something. I, I just didn't watch the video. These pastors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. Yep, yeah, that's it right there. Yeah, that's it right there. Now play the video. I never saw the video. But pause. What, hold on. Now. We must put a disclaimer so we see what's going on. Okay, let's play the video. Then we'll come out. I'll be showing you 10 African pastors that can never make heaven. Coming at number 10 is Prophet Andrew Ijimandu. Prophet Andrew Ijimandu is a Zambian based Nigerian prophet, popularly known as Prophet CR1, who is the general overseer of Christ Freedom Church. The prophet man miraculously vomited money during one of his miracle hours, so the admiration of his church members. Wow, vomiting kid, we see you, sir. Continue. Or is it the episode he told his church members to lick his shoe to get deliverance? I've been at the miracle money on oh. do and so lick my shoes and get deliverance. Keep going. American Wonder. I've been at the Miracle Water where they heal HIV and AIDS plus get expiring date joint. This one claims he ain't get natural gift of vomiting money. He even demonstrated this so to his pause. members. So this one vomits money, he says. He tells the people that he vomits money. Who does that? Keep going. During a Sunday service. During the live service, he could be seen vomiting money from his mouth. According to him, he said he's often loaded with millions right inside his stomach, which was later discovered to be black magic. That is winchy winchy. At number 9 is Pastor Chris Okafor. Pastor Chris Okafor is a Nigerian pastor, televangelist, leader, and founder oh. of the Mount. What's going on with Ephraim, man? What's going on with Ephraim? Oh my god, man. Play of liberation and miracle ministries also known as liberation city who in 2019 was seen in a video healing a woman whose arm was wrinkled well fortunately and unfortunately this same woman has been seen in five different churches with the same problem and when the video hits the internet pastor okafo responded saying he never conducted any fake miracle but rather he retrieved the woman's missing bones directly from the coven of witches after further investigation it was revealed that the woman was an actress who confessed of getting paid by men of god to fake miracles hey wait well done sir we see you from the high places continue it's all right 
Number eight is Pastor Chuku Emeka on her name Miriam, aka Odumeje. Pastor Chuku Emeka on her name Miriam, known popularly as Odumeje, the Lion, the Fight, the Indaboski, the Liquid Metal, Bahosha, is the general overseer of Mountain of Holy Ghost Intervention and Deliverance Ministry, whose method of healing has earned him the title of the Wrestling Pastor, as this one is not a preacher of love. Oh. He is the one. So look what they do. Look what he's doing, man. He's throwing the sister in the chair. He says he's the wrestling pastor. Who does this? Christianity. Go ahead. Oh, the fight, the liquid metal, the Indaboski Baosha. Liquid metal was called out by a former female associate known as Ada Jesus, who accused him of being a false prophet and a trickster, who stage manages his miracle, which he does in WWE SmackDown manner, and further described him as a money inclined showmaker. Hey, way, showboy, sir. And in recent events, he disclosed that his purpose on earth has been fulfilled. Hmm, I wonder what next for the liquid metal, if not WWE for the other life. Oh, yeah, now make we buy our relaxer and chill, they observe with. Main at number seven is Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Apostle Johnson Suleiman is the general overseer and founder of Omega Fire Ministries in Edo State, Nigeria. In 2016, oh. the controversial What's going on with Ephraim, man? Give me what's there for the 17. Man, what's going on with Ephraim, man? They are our brothers, but my god, man. Who's here for? Come on. Who's here for the 17? Who's here? Chapter 4, verse 17. Watch this. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 17. Go ahead. Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. He says, Ephraim is joined to idols. Let him alone. Go ahead. Their drink is sour. Their drink is sour. Read. They committed whoredom continually. Mm. Her rulers with shame do love, do love, give ye. You see what Ephraim is doing? Now play the video. Special clergy was involved in a Pogide scandal with one Canadian based singer Stephanie Otubo, who accused the charismatic televangelist of being in a relationship with her, having his with me, his with you section with her, putting her in the nine months lifestyle, asking her to terminate the nine months, and also promising her, Yes, I do. And all this AO AO reportedly happened while he was duly married. Oh, what a life! When asked, the clergy denied knowing Stephanie, rather, he disclosed that Stephanie was a Pogide worker he once helped. We can't even say Nadia he end though, but in 2020, he Another Ekelebe stunner shocker Busta Ryan come out come when Pastor Mike Davis accused the Auchi based pastor of having an affair with his wife Faith Ediko, who was heading the Abuja branch of the Clerics Church in Otaku. It's alright, continue. Finally, no smoke without fire. I rest my case. At number six is Pastor Daniel Obinim. Pastor Daniel Obinim, also known as Angel Obinim, is the presiding pastor of International God's Way Church in Ghana. In 2014, Oga Pastor Man was seen on television stepping on the belly of a woman all in the name of deliverance. What a funny fellow. Oga tried the rest, I beg, he get why. The controversial Pastor Man calls himself an angel of God. Hmm, they play. Just they play. Which led to the name Angel Obinim given to him by his church members. In 2016, he told his congregation that he could transform himself and others into objects and animals. Oga Transformer, we halo. Now the Oga Pata Pata of all in doings was in the same year let's go live okay brothers and sisters we apologize some network issues okay we restored the stream back okay brothers send the new link okay okay was there for which was one and two the book of Hosea, chapter four verse one Read. hear the word of the lord ye children of israel go ahead for the lord had a controversy with the inhabitants of the land Read. Because there is no truth, no mercy. No what? No mercy. There is no mercy among the twelve tribes of Israel. Go ahead. No knowledge of God in the land. There is no knowledge of God among the inhabitants of the land that the Lord has a controversy with. Read. By swearing and lying. By what? By swearing and lying. By swearing and lying. Come on. And killing. And what? And killing. And what? And killing. And killing. Now show the video that um. There's a video that um. Um, I need to actually send. I don't think I said that video. Let me see. Um,
Make sure to cue that video that I said you must look for. Now, this video is quite disturbing, so just um, be advised. Okay, I sent it on soap media. Now, read that again. If that's the video. Now, cue the video. Okay. The disclaimer must be on. Don't play it yet. Don't play it. Pause it. Go back. Move it back. Okay. Then make sure the disclaimer is up. If it's on the left, and then you're just going to proceed it on my command. Yep, okay, read that Hosea 4 verse 1 and 2 again. Let's go Hosea chapter 4 verse 1. Watch this. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Read. For the Lord had a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God in the land. Go ahead. By swearing. Because that's what the Lord says. By swearing, come on. And lying. And lying, the Lord says we love to lie. Go ahead. And killing. And what? And killing. Merciless killing. Now play the video. Now share it and play it. And kill it. Remember it says there's no truth, there's no mercy. Now, well, hold on, before you play it, he says there's no truth, there's no mercy. He says because we like to swear, to lie and kill one another in cold blood. Now play the video. This video right here is very brutal, so just be advised. Now you see those three brothers there, just walk you. Look at the one at the back. Right there, cold blood. Like nothing. This is in Jovic. Like nothing, man. These are the precious sons of Zion. Look at what they're doing, man. Isn't that what happened to AKA? That's how he was come down there, like this. By these assassins in Kavi. These gang who gangster militias look magnificent. That's them. Read the verse again. Verse 2. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 2. By swearing and lying and killing. And what? And killing. Go ahead. And stealing. Mm. And committing adultery. That's, the, that's number one on the list. Go ahead. They break out. They fight, read. And blood touches blood. And blood touches blood. Cold blooded killing. No mercy. That's what we're reading here. And that's what you just saw in the video. Well, don't play that. You can take it off the screen. You understand? So, what we're seeing here. What we're reading is what you are seeing, is what you just saw. That can happen to any one of us by these monsters that you see on the screen. So that's why I need you men staying in the spirit, man. Because when we go out there, these are the monsters we have to deal with. These are the demons, these are these devils, these are the ones that we have to teach the, Lord, the word of God for them to repent. Understand that? These are, the, these are the monsters we have to deal with. Messiness killings, man. And they don't give a damn. Understand that. They don't care about human life. Now, um, give me. Give me Leviticus 19 verse 17. Actually, give me First John 3 15. Now, cue the next video. Cue the next video, man. The one with the, 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 the blue light security that was protecting, um, what's his name? Ace Mahashule. That's his name, right? The deputy president. Now, let's just see what they just did. It's recent that video. This one, I don't know. Um, that is the one that sent it to me, but I don't know when it, when it was. But this one is quite recent. First John, chapter 3, uh, verse 15. Watch this. The first book of John, chapter 3, verse 15. Whosoever has his brother. No, no, no. Hold on. Okay. Do you have it? I said cue the video. I already told you that you must put ready the video. Okay. Did you watch it to see what is in it? Okay. Play the video. Cue it.
I'm going to show you how evil, how evil, without this Bible, listen man, Israel is evil without this Bible. Okay. Uh, can we watch it somewhere on TikTok? Is it on TikTok? No, but the, not, not News 24. Why don't you look at ENCA because they have the video. You know they will report stuff like this. So let's use that to, to our advantage. I know they have it, man. I know they do. No, that's news twenty four still. Yeah, I don't know if they showed it. Yep, I think that's the one. Yeah, go back and use it. Ah, uh, but they don't show it. Do they show it? Yeah, yeah, so let's play from TikTok. You see what they have in their hands? Guns. Their brothers were unarmed. They didn't show any, they didn't put out, they didn't put out any guns, but they put the guns out. The level of hatred, man, is unbelievable. Yep. Now let's share it. Put the disclaimer up. You see, the same spirit that this VIP protection unit has is the same spirit that the white man has that has been oppressing us, killing us, mercilessly killing us. They have the same spirit. They move in the spirit of the oppressor. So it's also telling you the spirit that the government is moving in. They are moving in the spirit of their oppressor because the government is oppressing the people. They are not saving the people. You understand? They are moving in the spirit of the, the people that are oppressing us unto this day. Understand that? Okay. Now play the video. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look at what they're doing, man. Tell me, look what's happening here. They have guns in their wedding guns, Lord, man. Come on! Look at that. Ah, no, you know what they did? Mm? They disturbed them. Mm. This one's they can kill you. You see, that's a wicked Negro in the background speaking evil. There is no justification for what how they responded to these young people. men. You Go back. There is no justification for this man. Yes, start playing for the movie from the beginning. What is that? With guns, oh man. Gosh. These people have no guns in their hands. And they do. Hey, look at what, what they're doing. Some evil, these oh, are niggas, on. man. These are niggas. You understand? Uh, niggas in no, the Bible, you know by the way. Did. These are niggas, they man. Disturbed them. Okay, that's not like that. Don't listen to this wicked Negro just be speaking evil in the background. You understand? Now, give me first John 3.15. This is your government, by the way. You see that? This is your government. These unclean spirits. These are unclean spirits then. Like frogs. That's them. Now read the Bible. First John 3, 15. We good? Okay, come on. The first book of John, chapter 3, verse 15. Read. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. That's what you just saw on the screen. 
Those men, they hate their own people, man. They despise their own race. That's why the level of hatred they have in their hearts, that's why they do the stuff that they do to, that they, they, they do to us. Because remember, remember that another thing also you must remember, we've got Hamites among us too. Don't forget that we've got Hamites among us. Those dirty Hamites. We've got them among us too. They look like us too. We. Really? Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. Go ahead. And he know that no murderer had eternal life abiding in him. No murderer had eternal life abiding in him. This is deep hatred for your own people. Give me that in First Maccabees 11 verse 21. First Maccabees, because I'm going over the book of the Maccabees right now. Some heavy stuff, man. Um, yeah, First Maccabees 11 verse 21. The first book of Maccabees, chapter 11, verse 21. Watch this. Read. Then certain ungodly persons. Certain ungodly persons, read. Who hated their own people. Who did what? Who hated their own people. They hate their own people. You see, that's the government protection unit. But look at what they're doing to those brothers, man, in the, in the polo. Right? They were stamping on them with guns. They had guns waving in their hands, and they were stamping on them. There is no justification for that behavior. That behavior is demonic. But that's your government. You see how they respond? You see how they deal with the civilians? That's how they deal with the civilians. That could be your son in there. That could be your brother in there. That could be your uncle, man. That's a father in there. That's a, somebody's son. But look at how the government is dealing with the civilians. The same people, they say vote for us. That's how they deal with them. Read the Bible again. The first, book of, the first book of Maccabees, chapter 11, verse 21. Read. Then certain ungodly persons. Now, certain ungodly persons. That's those VIP protection units. That's the ungodly persons that we're reading about here. Read. Who hated their own people. Who hated their own people. Those government protection units that you saw, they hate their own people. They despise their own race. Read. Went unto the king and told him that Jonathan besieged the tower. You see that thing? So now, those what you just, those men, they hate their own. They hate and despise their own people. That's what you need to understand, black man. Give me that in First Maccabees 10 now. First Maccabees 10, verse 60. Watch this. The first book of, the first book of Maccabees, chapter 10, verse 60. Read. Who thereupon went honorably to Ptolemy's, where he met the two kings and gave them and their friends silver and gold and many presents and found favor in their sight. Read. At that time, certain, certain pestilent fellows of Israel. You see that certain pestilent fellows of Israel. That's the ungodly people. That's the ungodly, wicked Israelites that hate their own people. Because this is during the time of our forefather Jonathan. Okay, go ahead. Men of a wicked life. Men of a wicked life. So what we're reading here is the same men of a wicked life that you saw on the screen. That way, this is the this is the government VIP protection unit that protects the deputy president of the country. You understand? Read that verse again, man. At that time, certain pestilent fellows of pestilent, Israel. Pestilent, pestilent fellows of what? Certain pestilent fellows of Israel. Read. Men of a wicked life. Those are men of a wicked life. Read. Assembled themselves against him. Against our forefather Jonathan. Read. To accuse him. To accuse him before the heathens. Read. But the king would not hear them. All praises to the most High. The king didn't listen to them. Those wicked, pestilent fellows of a wicked life. But let me show you something about Paul Mashadini. Because remember, those are the people that protect him. Those are the people that he had picked, right? Watch this. Give me the book of um, Ecclesiasticus. I'm going to show you something about um, Paul Mashati. Because those are his people, right? Those are his VIP protection unit. Watch this. Give me, give me some like 10 and 1. I'm going to show you something about Paul Mashati. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 10, verse 1. Watch this. Read. A wise judge will instruct his people. A wise judge will instruct his people. Paul Mashitin is not a wise judge. 
He's an unwise man. He's not wise. You understand? He's foolish. Read. And the government of a prudent man. Paul Mashatila is not a prudent man. That's what you need to understand. Read. Is well ordered. Paul Mashatile, those men that he governs, they are not well ordered. So what is that telling you? He's not a prudent man. He's not a wise man. He's a foolish and a, a what? He's a foolish man. That's what you need to understand. Keep reading. Watch this. As the judge of the people is himself. Stop right there. As the judge of the people is himself. So those, the, you see that VIP protection unit is a reflection of him. The VIP protection unit is a reflection of Paul Mashatina's character. That's a reflection of him. Read the Bible again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 2. Read. As the judge, as the judge of the people is himself. As the judge of the people is himself. So the VIP protection unit is a reflection of Paul Mashatina. That's his reflection. Read. So are his officers. So are his officers. So, so are his VIP protection unit. Read. And what manner of men the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. You see that the men that dwell therein, that's the men that follow him. That's, the, that's his officers. You see what his officers are doing? That they are assaulting the civilians with guns and they are unarmed. What does that tell you? That, what does that remind you of June 16th? June 16, you had students marching, you understand, unarmed, and the police met them with what? Light bullets, and they killed them. That's the same thing that you just saw on that video. Keep reading. An unwise king destroyed his people. An unwise king destroyed his people. Paul Mashitina is an unwise judge. He's an unwise king. Read again, man. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 3. Watch what the Bible says. Come on. An unwise king. An unwise king. Paul Machetina is an unwise king. Read. Destroyed his people. He destroys his people. Because there's not even a statement that he's put out. The people have been complaining that he has said nothing and he has not said anything. Because he's an unwise king. Read. But through the prudence of them, which are in authority. You see that the, those that are in authority, the, those that are prudent and are in authority, go ahead. The city shall be inhabited. The city will be inhabited with what? With wise men. So right now, his VIP protection unit is what? It's just a bunch of unprofitable sons. The same thing that you see in the Christian church, those are the men that are around Paul Mashadim. We're going to call you out because guess what? Like, you say you, are, you, you want to be a leader. You, are, you say you call yourself a leader, a leader is responsible. You are not responsible, Paul Mashatil. You are an irresponsible so-called leader because you are not the leader of the people. You are not the leader of the people. I'm just going to tell you straight up. Read verse 1 again. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1. Read. A wise judge will instruct his people. To do what? To act in an orderly man. Read. And the government of a prudent man. The government of a prudent man is well ordered. The government of a wise man is well ordered. But when you look at Paul Mashatile, his government is not well ordered. You look at his officers. Go ahead. As the judge of the people is himself. As the judge of the people is himself. Go ahead. So are his officers. So are his officers. So are his VIP protection unit. His VIP protection unit, they are unwise just like him. Read. And what manner of men the ruler of the city is. What type of man the ruler of the city is when the evil is happening in the city? And guess what? His officers are responsible for that evil. Go ahead. Such are all that such are all they that dwell therein. So they that dwell in the city that are governed by this unwise king, they are going to be just like him. Read. An unwise king destroyed his people. You see that thing? That's the job. They are destroying their own people. Because that, the reason why they destroy their own people is because they hate their own people. That's what you need to understand, man. So those are not the leaders, brothers. Those are not the people. Those are not the people that are going to govern us. We only have one governor, and that's the Messiah. He's the one that governs us through the word, the word of the Most High God. That's how he governs us. Because Christ is a prudent man, and his government is well ordered. That's what you need to understand. That is what you need to understand. But Paul Mashatile is, is an unwise judge. That's why his officers are doing so much evil. They are irresponsible. You understand?
That's why the community is 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 an uproar because of that thing. Okay. Now give me Proverbs one, verse ten. We're almost done. Proverbs one and ten. Watch this. Go Proverbs chapter one verse ten. Read, my son. If sinners entice thee, my son. If sinners entice thee, hold that. Give me Proverbs twelve twenty six. Proverbs twelve verse twenty six. If sinners entice thee, okay. Proverbs. Who are the sinners? I'm gonna show you the nationality of the sinners. Watch this. Read. Okay, the mic. The mic. Are we good on this? Okay, we're almost done. Proverbs 12, verse 26. We've got Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. Read. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. Go ahead. But the way of the wicked seduces them, entices them. Okay. Is it done? Bear with us, brothers and sisters. Just bear with us a second. So what do we need now? Look in the front pocket. You find one. Okay, let's go. Proverbs twelve twenty six. The book of Proverbs chapter twelve verse twenty six. Read. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. Go ahead. But the way of the wicked. But the way of the wicked. Come on. Said Jews at them. So the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. The neighbor here. Leviticus nineteen seventeen. Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter nineteen verse seventeen. Read. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt not hate your brother. Don't hate your brother in your heart. Go ahead. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. You must in any wise correct your brother. Read. And not suffer sin upon him. You see, that's your neighbor, right? Keep it. Go ahead. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge. You say, don't avenge, no what? Nor bear any grudge. Because that's one thing that um, black men cannot, that they are unable to do. Especially those that are raised by their mothers, especially those that have money issues, they cannot have what they are unable to not hold a grudge. Read, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, against the what against the children of thy people, against the children of thy people. That's your neighbor. Now, that's the sinners that will entice you, that's the sinners that will seduce you. Now, go back, Proverbs 1 and 10. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10. Read. My son, if sinners entice thee. That's the children of your people. If the children of your people entice you. Read. Consent thou not. He says, don't consent to that. Read. If they say, come with us. Come with us. Read. Let us lay wait for blood. Let us lay wait to kill our own people. Because that's what happened yesterday here in Calpontaine at the corner next to the garage. Read. Let us look privily for the innocent without cause. You said, let us look privily for the innocent without cause. Meaning you hate your brother without a cause. Read. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave. Let's kill them because the grave swallows up those that are dead. But another say we're going to swallow them alive as the grave. Meaning we're going to put them to death in cold blood. Read. And whole as those that go down into the pit. You see that thing? The grave. Go ahead. We shall find all precious substance. Because after they do that, they want your precious things. They rob you, they want precious things. Go ahead. 
We shall fill our houses with spoil. You see, that's what they do. They come into your house, they kill you, they steal, they, 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 kill, they take everything you got, and they fill it in their houses. And when they get home, here come the mother. They know. Some of these mothers know that their children are doing evil and they blood money. Read. Cast in, cast in thy lot among us. He says, cast in your lot among us. Meaning, let's mix our, our precious possession whom we stole. Read. Let us all have one purse. Let us all have one purse. Meaning, let's put these things in one place. Go ahead. My son. Walk not thou in the way with them. He says, my son, walk not thou in the way with them. Don't be joining gangs. Read. Refrain thy foot from their path. Don't go into their, don't even join them. Refrain your foot from their path. Meaning what? Don't even associate with them. The Lord is telling you. So because guess what? Children, you tell them, don't mix up with the friends that, that are evil, that are going to influence you to do evil things. They don't listen to their parents. Mostly. And they're the ones that end up dead. They are the ones that end up joining gangs. It's not just the men. The women also, they join gangs. And you know how they get initiated, the women? They run trains on them. That's how, get, that's how they get initiated into these gangs. Understand that? Read. My son, walk not, walk not thou in the way with them. Read. Refrain thy foot from their path. Watch this. Come on. For their feet run to evil. Because that's what they care, they think about. That's why it says, for idleness teacheth much evil. Their feet run to do evil. Go ahead. Haste to, for their feet run to evil. Their and feet make, run to evil, read. And make haste to shed blood. They make they are quick to kill. They are quick to, sh to shed blood. Meaning they are they are quick to want to kill in cold blood. That's what you just saw in the video. I'm not gonna play the video again because it's demonic, it's brutal, man. Read. Surely in vain. The net is spread in the sight of any bird. You see that thing? It says the net is spread in the sight of any bird because they, they put the net up. They, we you the bird. They catch you. They rob you. They steal everything from you. And after that, they kill you without cause. Micah 2 verse 8. Micah 2 verse 8. Watch this. Of Micah chapter 2, verse 8. Read. Even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. You see what he's saying? Even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. Meaning, your own people, now you become enemies unto them. They become enemies unto you. Go ahead. You pull off the robe with the garment from them that pass by secret, securely, securely, as men are. As men are versed from war. As men are versed from war. Meaning they, wait, they lay wait to do what to rob you. To steal from you. And after that they are not satisfied with blood. They will kill you. In cold blood. During the people in broad daylight. That's because that's what we're reading right here. Keep reading. Watch this. The women of my people. Have you cast out from their pleasant houses. You see what the Lord is saying? Because after they do that. They go, they go after the women. He says, the women of my people have ye cast, cast out from their pleasant houses. That's why they are the ones that they wait. If a man in that house dies, here comes the Negro. That's what they do, man. Read. The women of my people have ye cast out from their pleasant houses, from their children. Have you taken away my glory forever? You see that it says from their children, have you taken away my glory forever? Their children also they get they get what? They they get they got caught up in this. They become part of the crosshairs. That's what the Lord is telling. This is what's going on in our communities, man. Because we read this all the time, right? We we always attribute it to what? Because this is during the time of the Assyrians. But guess what? At this time. What was taking place? Give me Micah 1 and 1. I'm going to show you something. We use this verse for Esau, yes. But it also applies to our people too. That's why in verse 8 it says, Even of late, my people have risen up as an enemy. Micah 1 and 1. The book of Micah, chapter 1, verse 1. Watch this. The word of the Lord that came to Micah, the Morasathite. The, the Morasa, Morasa the more. The, 
the more satite. Go ahead. In the days of Jotham, Ahaz and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Read the verse again, verse 1. The book of Micah, chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came to Micah, the Mosatite, in the days of Jotham. So now, Micah was a Mo. Mo means black. That's where the word Moors come from. When we're ruling during the time of the Moors in Spain and Portugal, we called ourselves the Moors. So that's where it comes from. Go ahead. In the days of what? In the days of Jotham. In the days of Jotham. This is during the time of the kings. Read. Ahaz. Who? Ahaz. Remember, Ahaz is the lineage of Ahab. Go ahead. And you Hezekiah. You see, Jezebel is always hiding up in there. Go ahead. And Hezekiah, kings of Judah. And Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Go ahead. Which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Which he saw concerning what? Samaria and Jerusalem. So, this is talking about us. Now, Micah 2 and 1. Because Micah chapter 2 verse 1. Watch this. Woe to them that devise iniquity. You see, it says, Woe to them that devise iniquity. Go ahead. And work evil upon their bed. They work evil upon their bed. Who's doing this? They see the, the precious sons of Zion. Read. When the morning is light. When the morning comes in the morning. Go ahead. They practice it. They do what? They practice they it. They practice it. Go ahead. Because, because it is in the power of their hand. Because it is in the power of their hand. What is in the power of the black man's hand? The gun. That is in the, the power that is in the black man's hand today is the gun. Not the Bible. The gun. When he says they work evil upon their beds, I'm going to show you something about Israel. Give me, go back to Proverbs. Give me, now give me Proverbs 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 4. Read verse... Read verse 14. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 14. Come on. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Says, Don't enter into the path of the wicked. You understand? Jump up. Mm. Yeah, read verse 1 and 2. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 1. Read. Hear ye children the instruction of the father. He says, hear ye children the instruction of a father. Because the job of a father is to instruct the children. Go ahead. And attend to no understanding. And attend to no understanding of this Bible, what it says. Read. For I give you good doctrine. Because I give, I'm, because I'm giving you good doctrine. Read. Forsake ye not my law. Because my laws will preserve you. Go ahead. For I was my father's son. Read. Tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. You see that thing? Read. He taught me also. He, he did what now? He taught me also. This is King Solomon speaking regarding who his father, King David, taught him. Read. And said unto me, mm. Let thine heart retain my word. Let, my, let thine heart, let thine heart, King Solomon, retain my word. Read. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my commandments and live. That's what King David taught King Solomon, right? And he's teaching his son, Rehoboam. Jump down to verse 14 now. Verse 14. Watch this. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Said, my son, don't enter into the path of the wicked. Read. And go not in the way of evil men. Don't go into the way of evil men. Read. Avoid it. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Don't pass by it. Turn from it. Turn from it. And pass away. Watch this. For they sleep not. Stop right there. For they what now? For they sleep not. Because why? They work evil upon their bed. That's why they don't sleep. They work evil upon their bed. Go ahead. Except they have done mischief. When the morning is light, they practice it. Because it is in the power of their heads. Read. And their sleep is taken away. Because they work evil upon their bed. Read. Unless they cause some to fall. Unless they cause some to be, to be put to death. Read. For they eat the bread of wickedness. That's what they eat. They feed on evil, man. Because the, when we come and shed the light in the community, we're going to be the problem. You understand? Because they live in that darkness. When we show up, guess what? We're going to be causing problems. I do. I want to cause problems with the word of God. Read. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. You see that? They, that's why it says they are drunken and not with wine. 
Because what is the type of wine they drink? The wine called violence. Read. Where the alcohol level is 100%. Read. But the path of the just is as a shining light. Because when we come with the Bible, we're going to be the shining light. Read. That shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Unto the perfect day. With the day of the Lord. Read. The way of the wicked is as dark. Because they love it. When there's chaos and, and, and disorder in the community, they love that. Read. They know not at what they stumble. They don't know what they stumble. Go ahead. My son, attend to my word. Read. Incline thine ear unto my saints. He says, incline your ear unto my saints. Come on. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Mm. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. In your mind. Go ahead. For they are life. They are what? They are life. Because keep my commandments and what? And live. Read. For they are life mm. unto those that find them. They are life unto those that find them. That means you must go out looking for them. Read. And health to all their flesh. And health to all their flesh. Meaning it's going to protect you so that you what? You shut down the lust of the flesh. Read. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Mm. For out of it are the issues of life. You see that thing right there? Go ahead. Put away from thee a forward mouth. It is put away from thee a forward mouth. Meaning shut the hell up, listen and learn. Read. And, per- and, and perverse lips that and perverse lips put far from thee. And it says, perverse lips put them far from you. The Lord is saying. That is what we read in right here. Go back. Micah 2 verse 1 again. The book of Micah chapter 2 verse 1. Read. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their bread. That's why it says they eat the bread of wickedness. Read. When the morning is light. When the morning comes. They practice. They practice it. Come on. Because it is in the power of their hands. Because it is in the power of their hands. The only power that the black man has today in the world is what? Is the gun. The knife. You understand? Read. And they covered field. Because in the morning, during the night, during the morning, during the day, what do they do? They be roaming around the community, checking what, the, what that family has. Okay. Looking at what the pro, what, what type of positions they have. They have a car. They have a this over there. They have a that over there. The, the old man looks like he's staying by himself. So on and so forth. They are surveilling the area. You understand? That's why a lot of the, the, old, the, the older people, they get invaded by these wicked demonic monsters. Read. And they covered fields and take them by violence. Because they've got power in their hands called the gun. And who put it there? The other nations. Read. And houses. And they house, they enter into houses by violence, read. And take them away. They take their houses away. Now, hold on, hold on a second. I'm going to show you something. Go back to the video. All places, all places. Bear with us, brothers and sisters. We're getting content for you, okay? Now, Micah 2, verse 2. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 2. Watch this. And they covered field. And they do what? They covered field. Start at verse 1. Actually, start at verse 1. Look, look, we're going to start at verse 1. One more again. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 1. Watch this. Woe to them. Come on, brothers. Read the verse again, verse 1. Of Micah chapter 2, verse 1. Read. Woe to them that devise iniquity. Woe to them that devise iniquity. They sit down, they plan evil. Read. And work evil upon their bed. They work evil upon their bed while they are sleeping. Remember, it says upon their bed. That means they have a house, they have a bed. They mean they are comfortable in their own houses, right? Remember that. Read. When the morning is light. When the morning comes, when they wake up from their own beds, read. They practice. They practice the evil they planned the night before upon their beds. Read. Because it is in the power of their hand. Watch this. And they covered fields. They do what? They covered fields. They covered fields. Remember what the law says. Hold that. Exodus 20 verse 17. They covered fields. They covered fields. Watch this, man. Exodus 20 verse 17. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 17. Read. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Don't cover your neighbor's house. But he says, but they and they covered fields. They covered fields. What did the Bible say? 
Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Don't covet your neighbor's house. Read. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Because your, the, your neighbor's house is in his, is in his house. Read. No, his men seven. No, his men seven. The people that are working in his house. Read. No, his mate seven. Read. No, his ox. His ox is, is his possessions over and above that. Today, if you don't have an ox, you have a chariot. Read. No, <laughs> no, his ass. No, his ass. That is donkey. Read. That he, he plows with. Go ahead. No, his ass. No, anything that is thy neighbor. That's his possessions, right? Okay, now go back. Micah 2. Verse 2 again. It was Micah chapter 2, verse 2. Watch this. And they covered fields. And they do what now? They covered fields. They covered fields. The Bible says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Read. And take them by violence. They take their neighbor's houses by violence. Read. And houses. And what? And houses. And houses. Because in those houses there's beds, there's property, there's furniture. Read. And take them away. They take them away out of that house, out of their neighbor's house. Read. So they oppress a man. So how did they oppress a man? They covered his house. Do you understand? They oppressed him. They took everything that was in his house. Read. So they oppress a man and his house. They oppress a man. They oppress this man. Not only that, but they oppress his house too. Read. Even a man in his heritage. Because your house is your heritage. That's your possessions, man. That's your inheritance, basically. So they oppress him. Is that even on that? Yes, sir. Now watch this. Now play the video. Now before you get there, give me, give me Deuteronomy chapter twenty-seven, read verse sixteen. The book Deuteronomy chapter twenty-seven, verse sixteen. Read. Cursed be he that set it light by his father. Or his mother. Meaning disrespect his father or his mother. He's breaking the fifth commandment. Read. And all the people shall say amen. And all the people shall say amen. Meaning we agree that this man or woman must be cursed. Read. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. You see that? Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. Your landmark is where your land, your, you know, where your house begins and ends. That's your landmark. And your yard. That's part of your property. Property. That's your inheritance. Read. And all the people shall say amen. And all the people shall say amen. Now watch this. Give me Proverbs 23. You see, the Bible is everything, man. Proverbs 23, read verse 26. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26. Read. My son. No, no, no. 22. I'm sorry. Proverbs 22, 26. The book of Proverbs chapter 22, verse 26. Read. Be not thou one of them that one of them that strike hands to strike hands is to make deals. Read of them that are of them that are sureties for death. Those that are sureties for death. Those that are gonna what? They're gonna help, they're gonna they're gonna put you in debt. They are sureties for death, meaning you make a deal for them to go into debt. Go okay, again, watch this. Meaning they're borrowing you money. Read, watch this. If thou hast nothing to pay, if you don't have money to pay them back, go ahead. Why should he take away thy bed? Stop it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why should he done what? Why should he take away thy bed from under thee? Because that's what black men was doing to each other. That's what black men are doing today. He says, why should he do, why should he do what? If thou hast nothing to pay, why should he take away thy bed under thee? You see that? Why is he kicking you out of your house now? He says, why should he take away your bed from under you? Why are you going to sleep? The same one that coveted your field. He was thinking upon evil upon his own bed. Now he's going to kick you out of your own bed. You understand? Now, play the video. You see, the Bible is a true book. Watch this. No, 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 no. Pause, pause, pause. He's not shared. Did you hear transition? Here we go. Pay attention here. Start from the beginning. Now listen up. Namusha and the way near Satan Kukishwe imindeni M. Tatu, as the way near as Sugar Sugain. Emutu? It's an alone. Kanjalo Nasekopano. Oh, you see the beds on the road? You see the beds on the street? This is the Bible, is a true book, man. Go back a little bit. 
Yeah, pause. You see that? Look at the beds on the streets. Look, they are taking the couch out. But you wanna find out why? Keep playing. Kanjalo nasekopanong. Loko ke gulandela umyalelo wenkantolo. Ekunya zuguba. Lababantu bakishwe zinjini nge muva guguba zita isiwe. Na guguba ziko nage ikalu ngukishwa guabo zinjini. Kepake noko ngoba pela uhlelo lulu uhlelo inkantolo. Lufegelewe ona ama poisa. Lukube gile abandu nkuluma na wenje banga panje. Agisikulume sana no munyege wabakishiwe zinjini. Sizo ukuthiye nangabe ubega ganjani. Naguba ute balake lute uwanda kota sizo kapuna lapo na lapo uguze sikuoje. La gubizwa kuna makama band uguze sitma sisu lande lutaba. Sigo azu kulumi sana nabu. Owa manjage sizwe ugutubega ganjani. Nyeri mm -hmm. zaida lae number 50 mungu. Si abona na mtanje ukishelo wa ngapande. Si abona mapoisa akona. Ukona usherif. Ogugushuguti. Si ngati yinto ebugega isi mtetweni. Mtambe guti nupaula wako. Uh, what happened in 2017 when I loan 150,000? I was paying oh. about. So he says he did a loan of 150,000, right? Okay, go ahead. 2.7 a month. Oh, go back, go back. To date up. After... So, so basically, the people that came to the people, the people that because there's people that are roaming around the communities right now, they are checking, they are committing people's houses, they are checking who stays in there. So if it's an old man or an old couple, guess what they do? They come and rent. And they begin to speak to the owners of the house until the house is, down, is theirs. You understand? Some come and say, we come from the bank. Uh, guess what? The, your bank, the bank is taking the house because you are owing such and such. The bank says the bank gives you up to about nine months or something for you to, before they even, even think of repossessing the house. They give you a chance for you to be up to date with your payments. Okay, now play. Uh, what happened in 2017? I loaned 150,000. I was paying around about 2.7 a month to date up to 2019 or November. I've paid 43,000. In the young I would it changed my change. It had to date. So the people they changed the title deed, he owns the house. Now the title deed has been changed in their name. Go ahead. It changed my change So these are the same young men that stay in the same street and they grew up before him. Look what they are doing. The people shall be oppressed, man. When the print when these young men are in the forefront, the people will be oppressed because they are targeting these old men. That's what they do. Go ahead. But no, in general, Spalia just need for safe guiding, Mabasho. That's okay, fine. I took a long patana in the law. Twenty twenty of February, two months in a patana, I was told to say, I'm getting at Angla Maloa Mines. Isn't to as manga as a company. My entire name is a chance. But a chance, yes, you can say, it's my bank, Manga or Patali, Lonia, but they give you plus minus nine months before they evict you. The way you're touching was on a call. So you have to meet all the signing in Abo, business of attaching the winds and Alaranja. Minangati, but in Polatera. Pause. You see, because remember, they, they, they go around the community. They know what you know, like, you know, because our people is cabbages. So now they borrowed him 150,000. They knew very well, or at some point, he's not going to pay it back. Because, so remember, he's working. What about those uh, pensioners? They are not working then. They are getting Sasa grant. So they target them to say, no, we're going to borrow you this amount. Every month you pay us this much. The Sasa grant, yeah, goes over grand. Two months he can't pay, they paid him a visit. Because they say we're borrowing you 150,000, your house is collateral. If you don't pay, we take the house. The house is not even anywhere close to 150. 150 is pocket change, it's nothing. But that's what they did. Go ahead. But in collateral. But when the collateral, yes, that's what we call we call we call it a collateral. Into the cost of the house is seven hundred and eighty thousand. 
when I'm going to seven one hundred and fifty thousand, that is your wins in the world. Who will sell it into in Zima, a mover, who can sell it in Lonia because we will be wasting time because in Sazo, I'm going to lend you there. Yangs and things are even hundred and fifty thousand. Or I'm a best I give you what bank niggas are twenty thousand in Kuming Han Belang with Yens and twenty thousand. Well, I mean, I'm in Kurata only hundred and something thousand man just said. Then you don't want to sell the house. They already sold the house be hundred and seven hundred and fifty thousand, and I didn't even get a cent boy. I'm going to sign a corner, it actually did over with this office or a woman's part. But they did everything themselves. So, where to from here? I don't know where to from here. In Tala Unaito, in Pagati, over much. Over Kumile, it's sent out of the house, woman. Isn't Abenzo Msalazo a voice of Tembeza? Ningumfanelo, Upeni Peshu, Wakatanebe. Okay, that's it on that. Now, this is the evil that is taking place in the community because of these monsters. These are monsters, man. Man, this, this young they make me sick to my stomach, man, because of what they are doing. Look at who they are, they are oppressing an old man. Now, they already sold his house for 750,000, but they got 150. You understand? They want to give him twenty thousand to go out to go out of his own house. So they bought the house for what? One seventy. Hundred and seventy thousand. You see how much money they made out of this? Nobody's doing nothing about this thing. Now the sheriff came, they kicking the old man out the house. What the hell is this, man? Now read that verse again. Mike. No no no. Proverbs twenty two. Read verse twenty six and twenty seven again. The book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 26. Read, be not thou one of them that strike hands, of them that, of them that are sure it is for death. Because that's what the old man did, unfortunately. Go ahead. If thou hast nothing to pay. Now, he says for two months he couldn't pay. Watch what happens. Go ahead. Why should he take away thy bed from under thee? Because that's what the young man did. They took away his bed from under him. Now the bed is outside. Go back to Micah 2. Micah 2, verse 1 again. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. They work evil upon their beds, meaning they have their own beds that they are able to, they have the luxury to work evil upon. Read. And when the morning is light, when the morning comes, read, they practice, they practice the evil they planned the night before. Read. Because it is in the power of their hands. Read. And they covered field. They covered in that man's field. Just like Ahab did. He coveted Nabot the Jezreelites field. Read. And take them away. They took it away. 170,000. Read. And they covered field. And take them by violence. Because that was violent what they did. That was violent, man. Read. And houses. And take them away. They took his house. Read. And they kicked him out of his own house. They put his furniture out. Read. So they oppress a man and his house. They oppress that, that man and his own house. Because that man has a family, man. Read. Even a man in his heritage. Now that's Israel boy. That's what we're dealing with every day in the community. This is the evil that is taking place on this day. And this is recent, fella. This is not old. It's recent. I was following the story the first time I saw the first video. They said they were going around doing all this. And then now that's the next level they did. They started with that. You know first what they started to do? They started sending letters to different houses. To say no, you owe such and such. Even Kulu, they send him a letter too. They say you own some hundred and seven something thousand. They say if you don't if you don't pay this, we're gonna take your house. So the community in the castles in the Temisa, they had to go out. They say, listen, we need to ban all these letters. There's a video where they were banning the letters, man. Because somebody wrote a letter and sent them to different houses. Because how did they know to send the letter there? Because they know, okay. That, that, the, in that housing, it's only one, it, it, it's an old man staying by himself. In that housing, it's an old woman staying by himself. So these are the houses we targeted. 
These are young black men doing. That's what they're doing in the communities, man. That's why we need to flood the communities. We need to flood the streets with the word of God. Their days are over. All these wicked demons doing all this evil, man. Their days are done. We coming for them. We coming for you. Understand that we coming for you. We gonna come for you with a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. Understand that we coming for you, man. We coming for you. Be afraid. We coming for you. Now read that verse. Read verse eight now. But Micah chapter two verse eight. Read. Even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. Read. Ye pull off the rope. Ye pull off the rope with the garment from them that pass by securely. As men averse from war. Because they are at war with their own people. That's the point. They are at war with their own people, man. I'm t- the Bible is a true book. Everything that you're reading here, you're seeing it right here. That's what these wicked demons are doing in the communities, man. You know how many that you don't even know their stories? How many that their houses have been taken like this? How many that are now fighting, they are staying with their relatives because... They snake their house from them. So many. They are going through this. This is some demonic stuff, man. There's some evil stuff that's going on. Stuff like this is supposed to make you mad. Give me that in Ecclesiastes 7 to 7. Ecclesiastes 7 to 7. Stuff like this is supposed to make you mad, man. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 7. Wait. Surely, oppression maketh the wise man mad. Oppression maketh the wise man mad. Oppression makes the wise man mad, man. That's what you need to understand. This is what's supposed to make you mad, black man. That's why you men, you're supposed to be upset about this day. It's supposed to vex your spirit. So much say, put on the ground, damn it. Read. And the gift destroyed the heart. Because that's the gift that they used to destroy that man's mind. That's how they destroyed it. Because of that. Give me that in Luke. Is it Luke? Luke 12. I think it's Luke 12 verse 13. Start verse 13. Luke chapter. Yeah, start verse 13. That's it right there. Luke 12 verse 13. Watch this. Book of Luke. Chapter 12, verse 13. Read. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide, he, that he divide the inheritance with me. He said, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. So instead of going to speak, because they can't go and speak to the man, because the man is going to say, what the hell? I work for this house. I pay for this house. This is my house. So they can't go and speak to them. So what do they do? They covet the house. They take it by violence. Go ahead. And he said unto him, Man, who made me judge or a divider over you? Who made me judge and divider over you? Go ahead. Watch this. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. Because that's the problem. They are covetous. They, can, they, they cannot just go and look for work. They are covetous. They can't just go out and look for work. They are covetous. Read. For a man's life Consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Because their life, if their life is made by the things they have. That's why they covet it and they take it by violence. That's how far they go. That's why Christ says, beware of covetousness. That's some evil stuff, man. That is some evil stuff. Okay? So now. Okay, where were we at? Go back to my 2 verse 8 again. The book of Micah, chapter 2 verse 8. Read. Even of late, my people is risen up as an enemy. Mm. You pull off the rope with them, you pull off the rope with the garment from them that pass by securely as men averse from, from war. Because they are at war with their own people. What I need you to show, what I needed to show you with this class is this. We are at war. And the war that we are fighting, the biggest war that we are fighting is the war with our own people. That's what I need you to understand, you men, especially you men. This is war. You understand? When I was in the street, you could feel the tension in the streets, man. You could feel the team. 
demonic activity in the street, you can feel it in the air. But I was happy that I swam in it. I was happy that we were, were you not happy that we were out there? We were out there, man. To feel the pain that the people is feeling. So that when we go out there, we launch an attack that no man will be able to be ready for. This is war. We're going out there. And we're going to march. We're going to make noise. We will speak loud. They will hate our gut, but we don't give a damn. That's the war that's coming. We bring in the war to them. These incubators, they have not seen the prophets of the Lord, man. We are not afraid of these incubators. I'm telling you straight up. Because we teach the Bible, man. We keep the commandments. We're going to go out there. We're going to teach the people the laws of God. And guess what? The most that God will deal with them. Our job is not to worry about them. Our job is to teach those that want to hear this book and repent. The God, the ungodly, the Lord is going to deal with them thoroughly. And the Lord will deal with them with contempt too. He will show no mercy unto them because they don't show mercy to their own people. The level of evil that these incarnates are doing with Magnificent, who can delicious, their days are done. Their days are done. We coming for them. Man, when I see the stuff in the community, you can see the people are terrorized, man. The people are terrified. The people are traumatized. They don't want to say nothing. They are afraid. And who's making them afraid? Young black men that are out of awe and the older men don't want to stand up because they are afraid to correct these young men. Because they are afraid the young men will be waving guns in their faces. That's what we're dealing with right now, man. They make me sick. But guess what? This is what we need to go to return back to the streets. It's time because we've been dealing with other things. Now it's time to return back to war. It's war time. You understand? It's war time. Put on the ground, man. Put on the ground. I'm telling you, put on the ground. If it be the Lord's will. We're going out there. They're going to see us. They've never seen nothing yet. And the army of the Lord, the Most High God's army, they are sitting up in there. They are hiding. They are afraid. They are waiting for us to show them how it's supposed to get done. Understand that thing. Give that in Exodus 6 verse 26. Read it. The book of Exodus chapter 6 verse 26. Read these are that Aaron and Moses, to whom the Lord said, Bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt, according to their army. According to their what? According to their army. According to their what? According to their army. According to their armies. Now play that uh, intro that we have played. Play the intro. I want you to play the intro. Now we give Ezekiel 37 and 10. Play the intro. Ezekiel 37 verse 10. Play the intro, man. This is war. Ezekiel 37 and 10. Read it. Go be Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 10. Go ahead. So I prophesied as he commanded me. Read. And the breath came into them. He says, so I prophesied as he commanded me. Go ahead. And they lived. No, 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 read the verse again, verse 10. It could be Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 10. Read. So I prophesied as he commanded me. So I prophesied as he commanded me. Come on. And the breath came into them. And the breath came into them. Read. And they lived. And they what? And they lived. And they lived. Read. And stood up upon their feet. They stood up upon their feet. Read. An exceeding great army. An exceeding great army. Read the verse again. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 10. Read. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and, and the breath came into them. Read. And they lived. And they what? And they lived. Put the video up, man. The intro. Is that the intro we got? The intro for the new videos now that we have. That's the one I want. Yeah. Cue it. Cue that thing, man. Ezekiel 37. Read verse 10 again. 
in Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 10. Wait. So I prophesied as he commanded me. Uh-huh. And the breath came into them. And the breath came into them, the laws of God. Read. And they lived. And they what? And they lived. And they what? And they lived. Wait. And stood up upon their feet. An exceeding great army. An exceeding what now? An exceeding great army. An army. An army. That's what the Lord, that's what Ezekiel is prophesying about. Play. Play the video, man. I don't want to see myself. Remove me, remove my I want to see the whole video in its entirety. Go back, go back, go back, go back. I want you to see this exceeding great art. Play the video from the beginning. Come on. Go back and use it. Go back, go back. Yeah, go back, go back. I'll show you, I'll tell you when to stop. That's it. Pause right here. Now read the verse again, verse 10. It will be Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 10. Read. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them. Read. And they lived. Go ahead. And stood up and stood up upon their feet. An exceeding great arm. And a what? An exceeding great arm. What time is it? War time. What time is it? War time. What time is it? War time. Who's the king? Right. Who's the king? Right. Who's the king? Right. What color is it? Black. What color is it? Black. What's your profession? Who? 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 What's your profession? Who? 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 What's your profession? Who? 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 What time is it? War time. Are you ready? Always ready. Are you ready? Always ready. Are you ready? Always ready. We the best again, man. Read the verse again. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 10. Read. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. An exceeding great army. Play the video, man. No, just play where it is now. Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. You can take that off the screen. That's it on that. All praises to the most high. So that's how I'm going to end the class.
I'm gonna end the class on that good note right there. All praises to the most high God. Okay, uh, so let's break bread. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, to pray. And when he had given thanks, he break it. He break it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in your blood. This do ye as oft as he drink it, in remembrance of me. For as oft as he eat the bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthy, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh the nation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Oh, praises. Oh, praises to the Most High. So, brothers and sisters online, oh, praise to the Lord. Happy Sabbath to you all. Okay. Hope you learned something from this class. Hope you took notes. If you want the class, play it again. Okay. There's a second video on the live. Go, just go to our classes. Soak in the classroom. Go to the live. Oh, praises. Hope you learned. And with that, we say shalom, most and best. Thank you.